Yeah. God, I really wish I got on recording Tyler calling himself a gullible idiot. I'm not... At least I, I got myself the, saying that. I'm on the gullible idiot list. That doesn't mean I'm a gullible idiot, okay? It just means I, in a single moment of stupidity, entered the list. And despite my years of genius-level geniusness, I, I'm put on. I'm still on that list because you can't really leave it once you're on it. Welcome to <laughs> the Barrel Vision Podcast. This is the Barrel Vision Podcast with our host, the Barrel Vision Podcast. No, um, no, 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 no. Our host, um, Barrel Vision Podcast news, <laughs> news. Even yeah, though we're gonna be doing hmm. a lot. A lot of videos on them recently because we're getting a lot of it, which is nice. <laughs> I mean, tomorrow will be good. Tomorrow will be hot. Tomorrow will be hot as hell. In case uh, no one's seen the dev stream or very short video I made just before this because uh, I couldn't get hold of Harry, uh, we are actually no, I, I never said it on that video. We are guaranteed, guaranteed. Do, 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 do. They specifically stated that tomorrow. We're getting a teaser, and by tomorrow we mean Friday the 9th um, for people in the past. We are getting a guaranteed singular grenade. Uh, like you just said, we're teasing a grenade. Um, yeah. So they're not doing two at a time, but they are currently teasing twice a week. So if they keep that up, then it's basically the same thing. My balls are itching. Yeah, so we should look into that. They did also. My, my balls really aren't blue, they're just terrified. Um, <laughs> they mentioned this uh, because somebody in the comment was like, uh, spoiler on all the grenades, they go bang. And they were like, not all of them go bang. Um, oh, there you go, and, oh, throwing uh, knives confirmed. <laughs> yeah, throwing knives. Somebody in the comments did suggest throwing knives or want throwing knives, so it's not just us. And then, they, and and then, they, and then the dev said, out. oh, that's a really cool idea, I wish we did that. <laughs> Like that would be the worst possible. Thing no, that'd be funny though, because I think they, I think they would say something. They that could be real, but they could also say something like that. Like if they knew as a, damn well that the throwing knives are going to be leaked tomorrow. That, that, <laughs> them doing that would be pretty funny. I mean, but, I will kind of. I I don't see if we get throwing knives. I don't know how I would react because I don't think I would actually be like holy shit. Because frankly. If, it's not that wild of an idea. Well, no, it's basically, um, I don't think, well, first of all, going off of the, obviously, them not all going bang doesn't inherently mean a new melee grenade, but it's closer. Yeah. It brings that closer like... to being a possibility, and we thought there was a high possibility anyway of there being at least one new melee grenade, and if there is one, I do think throwing knives is the highest likely, most likely. Yeah. Um, although I think the boomerang is weirdly likely as well, I don't know why. <laughs> And I think it because uh, I really wish I. I mean, I would throwing knives or shurikens, like, right? They du it double up the same. So I did also mention shurikens here. It really is just it's the same a idea. Quick projectile that counts as melee. That's really the vaguest term we're looking for here. But yeah, something like that is pretty up there as far as people want, and I imagine they would add. Uh, I think it would make sense. Um, Oh, sick, man. Well, something that we've decided just before starting recording that we're going to do during these sort of um, times um, that we would dedicate like, every other podcast during this period to news. Um, yeah. But to do that, we'd probably have to record on Friday for those ones. Mm. I hope you realise that. Yeah. I mean, I, and I don't want to, because you've already grown fond of having every other one basically be different, but we could just do a separate video on Friday called, like, News Recap or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but we, we need to save like, podcast ideas for later. <laughs> yeah, I'm aware that's why you're fond of it, but, uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we are running out of podcast stuff. No, 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 not as bad, nowhere near as bad as you think. But it's ah. still an issue that I f um, will have to face. Well, I mean, bear in mind when the actual... No, you haven't seen the out, list. We're like, you haven't... I have not seen the list. I'm, I didn't even know what we were doing today until literally five minutes ago, and even then I've forgotten. So I've, I'm still in the dark as far as what we're talking about. Uh, I've got written down here. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 podcast ideas. Yeah. Which isn't really enough, um, but still, we haven't. it's not like we're there yet. Are like, we're not even halfway like, there. Are any of those... Because bear in mind, when season three comes out, that'll be like three or four podcasts. Just talking about what that adds... Um, like our first experiences like we did for season two first impressions which in that one we took two podcasts to do that um, and then like yeah we'll, we'll probably do the same thing no we'll do well it would be like increasing it would be exponential every season it would be like we'll be free on our first impressions of season three <laughs> yeah uh, by season 10 it's getting a bit much but uh... no <laughs> yeah by season 10 it will be a bit much yeah because it will last until like the next season but, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, the way you say that, we should be fine, podcast, idea-wise. Plus, you know, we could always, and I've mentioned this several times, we could talk about a different game, like, uh... As, as Halo, because <laughs> you love <laughs> shitting on it. Well, yeah, it's Starfield for sure, actually. Halo. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, it's something that people don't really think about, which is for the best. Because okay. the words should get hyped. Can up I just? Starfield. I'm going to throw this out here. Oh, God, in, in, when we get to another podcast where we don't have enough news to talk about, say maybe the next one after this one, I'd love to do a Halo Infinite one because it'd be funny. Because it's like it, you've got so much to say, you've got such a rant, but you just don't care about Halo either. So I just think it's a really That's funny cool. viewpoint. Yeah. I, I love it so much. I'm not invested in the slightest. I don't actually enjoy even the good Halos. Um, I don't like the gameplay. I get that it's dated, but I, I mean... All right, let's, not, look, let's, not, let's, let's not do this is. now. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, I, I, I have and could rant for like an entire podcast on my and own. And you know what? I'll let you. Halo. I'm going to... Yeah. Uh, At some point soon, I think. Because just to yeah. see if we can... Bran- we haven't tried branching out of the podcast, so... That's a good way to do it. But, um, obviously, we do have a theme, and you're looking at it right now, but we do have news to cover as well. And Tyler's very very adamant that we do this before getting to the main theme, which I agree with in retrospect, because it's kind of hard to think about anything else. Um, yeah, so I, I don't think with... saving it is the right thing to do. And even, even with... There's more than one bit of news, but we're going to start with today's news. Um which makes the most sense to me. First bit of news, uh, my passport's arrived. Oh my god! I ordered it two months ago, and they took 70 quid the second I ordered it, and I had no more words from that. And uh, yeah, it just appeared at my door today. So thanks, government, for taking two months, but also thanks for actually delivering it. Second bit of news. Okay, Holy so... Shit and balls, we got our first teaser. Yeah, yeah, oh, that, <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. Let me, let, me, let, me take this. let me do this. So today was the... Um... Well, last week they said that we would start getting season three teasers this week, um, and that's not a lie. Not a, not no word of a lie there. Um, and today we got one during the dev stream on the eighth of September, twenty twenty two. An image was shown at one point late during the latter half of the stream, and I will I show you that image now. Wow! Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> What's that all well, about, eh? They pulled that up with like music in the background to make it seem like anything else would occur, and then it just. Well, no, 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 no. They that's they literally use that for like every, um, yeah. every teaser that isn't like a pre-made, like trailer, which might be what we get tomorrow. But we'll get into that as well. So immediately, I want to draw attention though to the numbers. I think I want to start there. So we've got 03 11 2022. 2022. Yeah, they, right. They I say I said twenty twenty two like by accident, but that's because it is the release date. Yeah. Right. So, and this doesn't surprise me. They actually did this, I think, for both season one and two. Definitely season one. The first picture we saw was sort of like, not concept art, but art. And it had like the the date on it. And same with season yeah. two. It was like the, it was a picture of all the four dwarves with the new weapons. And there was a light in the background where the nemesis ended up being. But it was cut out during that image. And then the, there was like the release date here. was scattered. <laughs> so yeah, which is why I don't, we need to take pretty much everything in this image with a grain of salt, but let's focus on the release date just quickly, because that is the release date. Um, perfectly fine, actually, because you were kind of expecting November, and I believe Early that they November. can... I believe that they will hit this, at least. And so, 
That, well, no, literally. It's also knowing. Knowing makes everything better. Thankfully, because of the way that they they do stuff, is like it, they, the, the being in the dark for so long is kind of a negative. But it's only because they don't give you a date unless they are a hundred percent sure that they can release it on that time, on that day. It, they that without a shadow of a doubt they release it on that. Yeah, time. They, they, it's, it's either a hard day or the quarter of the year they think they might be able to release it in. Yeah, the, which the is subject subject to change. Like ages. The hard yeah. dates I don't think have ever changed, to my no. knowledge. Because um, uh, especially now, when uh, they've made a point uh, that this is like like marketing at this point. Yeah, they started marketing season their, three. Yeah, their, yeah. This is having a solid date that they release everything is what they they need to have for like news publications to pick it up, like gaming news stuff like that. Like they are aware of how important picking a date and sticking by it is, which is why it takes them so long to give us one. Which is why I was kind of surprised that we got it immediately. Um, but uh, it makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I think that's uh, what we can really say for the date. Um, oh, you um, the image to see it, so it was a bit hidden. Well, yeah, the, the only other thing I'll say about the date is, even if it's a bit further away than perhaps they they would have liked. I think that's more important than what we would have liked, frankly. It just just knowing makes it so much better because. It's like, um, even if it is somewhat far away, it feels more in sight than... Even if, say, the release date was actually earlier, this still feels more in sight, like, on the horizon than than when you don't know anything. So even if it had ended up being earlier, when you don't know anything, it feels like it's never coming. So just having a date is makes all the difference. Later than you would have liked, right? Like, you've always said... I mean, you were originally, like... in months ago september but then you you came to terms with october and then now it's november but i think even though it's later it's still the fact that you have a date just you just feel better right? yeah <laughs> like... i mean it's like the, the only way that i can really um without sort of taking into consideration them as a company and how much respect i have for them it, if you take it on very much on face value it's only really excused by the fact that it's like a year from the first season which implies that it's been six month seasons which is like the the longest you can go really but technically the gap between season two and three is longer than six months it's only because it's a year from season one that this is like on face value okay (laughs) you know yeah but i am still okay with it it's not me saying like they failed it's not what i'm saying at all but it's like in triple a this wouldn't probably wouldn't fly Right. I do. I do like how just because we have a date, I don't feel as negative about this at all. Like as much as I think they definitely shouldn't have updates this far apart, the fact that I have a date means I'm okay with it now. For now, right? Like for now, it's fine. Well, it's Whatever. not like the updates are actually that far apart if you count certain other things as updates, like Oktoberfest, because yeah, that is an I update. Don't. You don't. <laughs> no, I've never. Oh, because never it's temporary. It. I've never, yeah, not to mention that, but I've never counted um, seasonal events like in the stuff, same as like Apex and that. I don't count that as actual like content, especially since yeah, most of the time it's temporary. The stuff they add, um, but yeah, but I, I don't know. For now, uh, it's actually um, 11th of March. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you flip yeah. them around, well, I, I this isn't Halo just, Infinite, uh, guys. Place. A guy in the comment uh, didn't add the zero when I first saw it because I didn't see the numbers at first. I I scrolled down and it was a it was like three one one two two and I kind of just ignored the two two and I was like three one one that could be the thirty first of the first. Is <laughs> it? And uh, it obviously like the right the yeah <laughs> obvious lack of that being the case kicked in. But like for yeah for a split second I was like Zam. <laughs> That's but, weird, man. Yeah, uh, I think we should actually talk about the image now um, or lack thereof. Uh, yeah, no, no, I call this an image. Well, okay, right. So I mentioned it for the both the season one and two thing. This is this isn't gameplay, right? This is art. This, this is, is con- the trailer. Not really art. concept the, art. It's like the flashy art. The same as with the. I mentioned it well, on the yeah. in the video before. It's the uh, you know it, it's oh, the kind of seasonal. Well, no, something's always concealed art. though, right? I think what we're actually going to yeah. get is. So well, yeah, what we're seeing here is. Whatever's being seen is through goggles. Um, I assume yeah. that will disappear, especially considering even though it's a blurry image, like the actual in interior is even blurrier than 
outside, which I, so I think it's a placeholder, yeah. and the full image will be revealed um, yeah, at, no, they, like, at a later date. They made they no, they have made that image, but then they just censored all of it, so we can't get all the information of the season immediately by putting these goggles on it. Goggles and blurring and particle effects just mainly well, covers all the. Well, I suppose we should start with the goggles, though, yeah. in some capacity. Which I, I assume. Uh, no, I'm assuming it's whatever. It, it's not a dwarf. It's from the perspective of a new enemy or creature. Oh, I think that's right. fairly obvious. What? I wouldn't assume anything else. I think you're absolutely obscenely wrong. First of all, the biggest take that everyone's going with is that those are just, this is just Driller's goggles. Like what Driller has on his head. That's this is just what he sees. Which makes complete sense. The shape, everything adds up. That is, this is what. Drew no, I think it's just some kind of creature that can't survive you in can't correct the atmosphere. Because you're wrong. You're actually wrong. This is so clearly a helmet. Have you seen the lightened up image? It actually has like helmet stuff in the inside. You're just wrong, Harry. It's not an alien creature looking. It is goggles. Or well, obviously it's goggles, a, but it's from what I prefer hazmat mask. Uh, it's like, you know, it's a, um, like, which I mentioned in the video as well, a, uh, like, I'm not sure how popular, I mean, it has gas masks and that are a thing, but like, uh, what do Brits have to use when we're getting bombed? Gas uh, masks. If you've seen, like, if you've seen Doctor Who, there's there was like an episode where like a kid had one of those on. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's someone wearing that because... They're in the caustic mire. No, I, just, I don't believe of any of this for a second. So let me explain. So the caustic mire was... Um, it wasn't no, it wasn't even prototype. They dropped it before they started making it. So it's update 33. That's when we got the two... I guess a lot of people wouldn't recognise them as two new biomes. Uh, the Azuwild and Hollow Bow. The Hollow Bow was going to be some other shit. Um called the Caustic Mire, which was essentially just an underground um, sort of toxic wasteland. Yeah, um, like corrosion. Yeah. Yeah, and there's not actually a corrosion biome. So, you know, it, it fits as well now with the sludge pump being in the game. Um, all I'm saying is, it is so clearly the Caustic Mire that I don't know how you could not just... Like, it's... First of all, I don't think anything yellow. about this meant to be clear. I think yellow. Ye yellow. It's, it was so that is the color of the caustic mire. First of all, that we've we've seen images of it. it that's that's kind of what it is. The same with like corrosion and that kind of thing. Just a yellow. I don't know what it actually is scientifically, but I think it's just kind of what happens to fig when it corrodes. It turns yellow. Um, <laughs> but that is so clearly what this is with the yellow smoke or that being like the toxic fumes. And there is like an explosion to the right, which people obviously you are POV driller and you are POV blowing someone up. Is that's me. not an explosion? Um, it, yeah, exactly. That isn't an explosion. That's like it is a a pool of uh, corrosion waste detonating. Oh no! I think on the right, you know, what's above it? Out. Sort of the um. No, no. I think that's solid, sort of sharp objects. To me, I registered this as like possibly a crash site of some kind. And like fractured bits of a spaceship. It, it definitely is a crash site, but it could still be the course. Yeah, no, you're not Can wrong. Be... I don't think it's. I don't think it's a. It's. It could. It will be a straight line if you're right. But I don't think there's enough reason to think you're right. It will be a straight line once you're proved it's... right. But I don't think it's like a hundred percent yet. I am like ninety nine percent. That's sure. fine. The only the only thing is if the, if it loses the caustic mire identity because it enters more crash site. Because I think that's the thing. Well, no, that's what I think it would be though. Because they the weren't actually mire, they, they weren't no, the no, biggest just, fans just, of the idea in development. Exactly. That's why they because, dropped it. Because uh, the you know giant tree biome uh, was pretty cool, and then they added the like um, a extra element of there being the blood red um, parasitic vines. Right? They loved the kind of combination of those two, which made it amazing. Caustic Mire fell behind because it was kind of just a corrosion biome. So if now, if they made it into a corrosion biome caused by an impact of say like a freighter or something that leaks uh, de like deadly chemicals everywhere, that can be more like dynamic instead yeah. of now like crystalline formations okay. or anything it is like shards of ship 
stuff like that. Shards of ship mixed with the general like toxic area that would that caustic my wiki and you know that what everything that carries that is a pretty visually cool biome and yeah but, but we need to okay be... i need to take that word first of all so the biome part it's it, it, so it's it, no no it's only feeling more likely because you've mentioned uh, the caustic Maya, but I don't think the image technically proves anything. Harry, where are they? It's a good point. No, no, this is what this is why. No, 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 no. See, this is. I don't think the image. Oh. You, you think the things on the right are actual like things, right? So where are those? What? Where are they right now? Well, to be honest, okay. No, no, no. Look, look through the left lens. The actual. No, no. The so this is a strange black object, some kind of silhouette. Um, what well, the left? That's engineer. How is that anything? <laughs> you are actually dumb. I'm Point... sorry, but that is so clearly the engineer. Like what? you can you can see him holding the warthog. That is literally just engineer. That's just everyone, that's just a triangle. Everyone on, everyone on the Reddit has picked it up. Are you on the left? on the left side right yeah the, yeah that thing is so clearly the engineer just like standing facing right with his shotgun warthog out that's just the engineer I, I don't know what to say everyone else has picked it up on it like on the on the reddit everything it's just it's just the engineer um it's like people are like engineer confirmed question mark engineer confirmed. season season three but yeah it, it is just engineer um I, I don't know what to say. I mean, maybe I just don't see how it's obvious though. I, I swear, but it lines up with people. Are, uh... the, the, well, it's weird because um, if you go back to the the season one thing, it was literally just like the caretaker sort of in shadow. But the um, the season two one, I think it had all the dwarves sort of present, or at least the scout was in the first good. image. No, no, the very first image was just scout. So it lines yeah. up. The dwarves tend to be in, and then. In the image, so it'll be cleared up. Kind of I think this is the most like um, distorted like version of oh, the final yeah. image that so far. I, I, if I were to assume that's the case, then I can sort of, you know, I can I can get along with these wild assumptions <laughs> of what's actually been shown. <laughs> um, but okay, so I, I do I need to I do need to come back to the caustic Maya thing because yeah this is clearly a different setting which makes biome very likely um, yeah. and if there is a new biome but it's like we had this idea that whatever the object is would crash and possibly reveal a new biome that was one of the options that we proposed yeah. if that's the route they're taking and if, if the route they're taking tomorrow. is that it would expose a pre-existing area on Hoxie's. Then yeah, obviously. Okay, the caustic Maya, sure. That's this is almost no way. There's, yeah, sure. And but I do because we didn't expand on this that we mentioned a few minutes ago. Of it, you said it would be more dynamic because of there being something having crashed into it. So that's a po sort of part of the biome is that it's yeah. like a crash site as well, with bits of wreckage scattered around, and that's why we'd have possibly a new enemy faction that isn't actually native to the Maya. Um, which is why I think it's still technically possible that we're not... This isn't a dwarf's perspective. I do think it's likely, but that's why I'm it's not struck... That's why it didn't strike me as that. The image. That's why it didn't strike me as that, because I can imagine it being the same reasons for it to be an alien they, they they could possibly still need a gas mask and like I definitely interpreted it a bit strangely at first because like I assumed that the lenses were tinted because it's some kind of um, alien vision of some kind but still through the goggles I still thought they were goggles not eyes um, but it, whatever the creature is it still needs to it's an intelligent creature that would wear a gas mask because it can't survive either but that's just that's that's probably a looser possibility than just i don't know i do think it's odd that it would be shown through the eyes of the dwarves it's an interesting idea i don't really know i don't see well, why I think either option is necessarily just, the case basically i suppose yeah i think it well it was supposed to be kind of 
better way of covering up the middle because otherwise yeah it's, it's, a, good, it's a, a good it's a good um flare, it's a good right? visual technique i don't know it's it's yeah. good in that sense and i think also i mean i think if I it might not mean anything I'm, 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 I'm going kind of fond of your going seeing through the eyes of something else i don't think it makes much sense because how is the eye cracking in the top left although i get what you mean that this is actually also wearing a gas mask um yeah that, i was never like, i was never thinking of through like just a, an alien's eyes because yeah because that to me is how they would want to do another intelligent species it might be completely covered in clothing yeah, or a suit of some face, kind first thing because you don't yeah. want people like sympathize it. And it's also like uh, the idea the, of it preying upon the dwarves is what I, my mind went to immediately. Yeah, I, I think yeah, there is watching them from a distance. But I, I'm also fond of the idea that it's a gas mask and that's like a, the new tool slash mechanic. Yeah, okay. You know so I, mean? I agree with you on this because um, it like, it like in you know uh, season these seasons had like hacking, but with yes, these ones you have right. gas masks where you enter loca locations and they might just add this as a feature for other ones as well that are just so dense of the inherent deadly atmosphere. Yeah, a, a breathing you mask where you can mask. put it on in anywhere where the air is um, harmful and yeah. it would stop then that from it, happening, but obviously it obscures your vision. Probably removes your HUD as well, maybe, I, even? I, I I'm not sure. I think maybe obscure your vision a little bit, like um, maybe not as bad as like pumpkins and Minecraft, but I'm thinking like it would have the low oxygen effect on it as well. So you can't spend that long in the areas with a gas mask on because you just, you don't have that much. Because maybe me. it's not a gas mask that's so purifying the air around you. Maybe it's an air tank behind you that you're kind of going in there with. So I think, I think there's a lot of potential there. It could just be Drillers goggles. It could also yeah, be Yeah, I just think that's mask. a little bit um, purposeless. Get, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. It could be a gas mask that is either on a something that's hunting the dwarfs or just on the dwarfs. We don't know the exact origin of that. Probably not best to bog ourselves down on it because, as mentioned, it's kind of just a gimmicky way of covering up what's actually on the image. But uh, we're trying to look yeah. past that. Can I? But, I'd yeah. like to talk about my even stupider initial interpretations. Because <laughs> when I first saw the image, I had absolutely no idea what I was looking at. It took me a while to sort of realise. Coggles. In all fairness, I thought yeah. it was like like a, like a scan of like the moon or something, right? Or, or well, two scans, I guess. And then I thought that the black shape was like maybe even the space rig. I, I still think you can interpret it that way, but looking at it, I can I see a dwarf in it. Away. I can see a dwarf in there. I just don't think it's it's not obvious to me. I don't know why. Um, yeah, it, it took me a while. And I didn't see the numbers at first either. I didn't. See at all, so I didn't know well, where I mean, that you, came from. You're not, you're not really supposed to. You need to like light up the image a bunch. Yeah, so you can see him clearly. Yeah, this um, image is brightened. The one I'm looking at. Someone put it on the Reddit, um, and that's what I'm looking at now. Wow. Yeah, look at these. But yeah, um, so that is currently our thing. I mean, we'll probably go in more detail on it when we maybe have a bit better of an idea. Like maybe they might have leaked a bit more of something. I mean, the interesting thing is how they're going to tease the new biome. Like, I'm, I'm not, I don't remember how they well, did the old ones. First of all, if if you do, like, if there is some kind of yeah. gas mask mechanic, the first teaser will be some kind of it'll be first of all in darkness and probably a dwarf wearing a gas mask if that's the yeah, case. Yeah, it's like a, a yellowy mist. So you can't really see, like and that. something new yeah. will be exposed like at the last second in the corner. Yeah, because that's because that's kind of what they did normally, wouldn't it? With like the events and Nemesis and that, they kind of like obscured it in the backgrounds of caves. But if the caves themselves are the things you need to spoil, it's going to be kind of different. Unless the gas masks are a feature. Um, well, it's just a useful tool for obscuring things. I mean, that's obviously its purpose in this image alone. Um, but I don't think does, it's completely meaningless. I don't think it it's just a clever the right trick. That if they add enemies, which I assume they will, um, that could be their gimmick they hide in the areas where you need to put in the gas mask on so you can't see them when they're approaching you. Well, yeah, because and... that's where I get like the tin and sort of like the, you know, the yellow smoke from. Maybe whatever it is, is sitting in the, which, in the gas watching. Yeah, which is also something, by the way, I, I saw an image of it, but someone uh, showed some like, old Caustic Mire images and all of like the old, you know, old uh, format, not format, what the fuck, uh, just art, old art forum. And uh, yellowy plumes 
of gas. Well, that's what up. I was thinking about though. Um, Do the colours actually line up though? Because I remember the course it might have been quite not like not like piss cool. yellow. You know, it was more like um, green, like pale. I, I don't remember it very well. Um, I might be wrong. The... No, yeah, it's 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 kind of actually more reddish with like um, yeah, I thought the, so, something like that. The, the, honestly, the art looks kind of like AI generated, which is what yeah, I thought they were. but it is so, also you know. old concept art, right? Yeah, it is very old. They probably went through a, a, a god knows amount of inc- um, the incarnations, uh, especially with now the additional of whatever the thing that crashed into Hoxie's probably is playing into the biome because they acknowledged that the caustic mire was kind of boring. And I don't think they're willing to, like, okay, now we'll just add it, right? They're yeah, and this will liven it up, it, I suppose. Um, which I think, you know, having a crashed freighter or a crashed meteorite or just something like that would just add more depth to the biome, which is kind of what they had with Caustic... Not Caustic, uh, Hollow Brow... Bra, wow! Which is, why they, uh, which is why they chose it over the Caustic Mire, because it actually had, like, storytelling in the environment, which um, they might now add to caustic mire which should be interesting and if we're wrong on everything then that's pretty impressive that is that would be impressive if nothing we've said is correct in any capacity um one last thing on this and i've forgotten um it it would be pretty cool if it's the caustic mire because um industrial sabotage from season one was well not really based on it was just built on a prototype that they had for um update 32 they were initially prototyping three missions and they left one behind, but they eventually built that into what became Industrial Sabotage. It's a pretty similar story here, it would be, at least. Because yeah. not that it was going to be, not that they were going to do three biomes, um, of course it might have just got replaced, but it's still very, it still be very cool for it to come back in that way because they and did a similar thing in season one. Better as well. Um, yeah. It should be the best version of itself or biomes generally, which should be interesting. Um, you love yeah, to see I, it. I am pretty hyped for it. Um, I think, you know, it doesn't actually tell us more about the update. Like, we still don't know what was coming towards the planet. We still don't know what the events are going to be. Obviously, the grenades, which we're going to learn more soon, I imagine. And the other questions. Like, oh, yeah, very soon, I guess. Tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that's so how grenades... it is, though, because we've always gotten this kind of art first. And then yeah. in my, the more gameplay-oriented stuff. We got given like the theme, like the kind of like uh, feel of the, the update. Pardon me. And then and then yeah, we were you know drip-fed the actual you know guns before, but now we're going to be looking at grenades. And uh, so for now, the probably the question we're going to get answered sooner rather than later is how many grenades per class. We are going to probably have that answer quite soon oh god yeah um and i'm gonna be honest with you i am leading towards one i personally not but i honestly think we're looking at more going to be one per class i think that that for some reason with the way that they've kind of been talking about the grenades in that in the uh the stream i mean yeah i mean this is first of all next teaser singular grenade uh, that's like that, but that's kind of fine because they're going to be doing two teasers per week so far. Um, so they could just add, you know, two per. But uh, it's also that you know someone was like, oh, uh, spoiler on all the grenades. They go bang, and they're like, no, not all of them. Which I, I don't know if that in, insinuates eight or four, <laughs> but like I don't know, it, it's just. It's um... Yeah, that makes it sound like a little bit more than four. It's, it it's, does. For some it's reason. definitely difficult to. It's definitely difficult to guess. I think what I find strange though, is honestly the community sort of, the way that people sort of picked up on the grenades and sort of things that have been said in the Reddit. I mostly see, oh, what do you think? Um, say, Gunner's new grenade will be. It's just like, why do you think there's only going to be one, and why do you seem so okay with that? I think it's because, and this is a fact, no one gives a shit about other grenades. <laughs> no one cares. Well, like, they should, because they are like... Yeah, but if someone's asking a question, board. then they do. So why do they sound so okay with, like, assuming there's only going to be one per class? I, I mean, I don't know. I guess they're just so set that, you know, one per class is just always been how it is. But, like, it's not equal at all. No, it's not. Like, 
That's why it I don't is. get it. That's why I don't get that assumption. It's still possible, and I'm sure there'd be good reasons if it's only one per class, but I don't get the assumption. Um, yeah. Because it's not, it's, it is illogical to me that you would assume that one per class is... Um, e- it's, it's the assumption that it's equal, because it's not equal. But that's not the point. It, it, it doesn't have to be yeah. equal. Even if they're, they're obviously occupying the same slot, the new grenades are occupying the same slot as new guns. But that doesn't mean they have to be the same... They have to represent the same level of addition or in terms of quantity. Um, but as you've said many times, if we only get one, that's just going to be disappointing. It's going to be and disappointing we... in its own like realm. Yeah, like like you could be like, wow, everything they, can, they yeah, added. They can so show amazing. up. They can show up for the rest of it. It might be banging. It's just a lo- taking on its own. One new grenade per class will feel a little bit hollow. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And plus, I think... If they added two grenades per class, that would actually be pretty interesting. Be hot. Like, 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 just like suddenly you just have two more grenades. Like that would be pretty. I don't know. That would just set more of a fire under people than. Yeah, it's also just the element of choice as well. It's just like everyone's just going to be using the one new grenade. Yeah. Um, because like weapons, obviously everyone was using using the new weapons and they came out. But you've got all the different upgrade choices and overclock choices. Yeah. Immediately, so play with, which is why I think realistically three per class is about equal. But then I feel like that is just too many, too much. So I'm I'm more than fine with two, but I'm just I can't see a universe where <laughs> one grenade is gonna sit right. But no, apparently it already exists. Yeah, yeah. So, which I think we should be moving on to the main topic. But I am gonna mention a couple of things in the. Uh, so actually, I could do that at the end. Do we want to? We could do Oktoberfest at the end as well, considering how long we spent on this. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I'll cover these this thing at the end. So stick around for that. I don't know what you're talking about, but sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's that? What are we talking about? Right. This is the question of the day. Um, basically, yeah. I do need to sort of. It, it'll be best explained by sort of just offering different versions of the title so how rewarding is drg or how satisfying is drg or how much how good is the player feedback in drg this this is sort of the line of thinking i was going down and I, it's a bit loose which is why i'm glad we had a lot of news to talk about but i think there's something solid here at least for a few individual points so i've got written down things like um unlock systems and the progression systems of which there are multiple um, you know, boss like boss fights and events, and how rewarding they feel, or how satisfying they are to do. Uh, mission slash assignment satisfaction, just a bunch of random crap. Um, but player feedback was something that I really honed in on. Right, so it's sort of like how it feels to do something like leveling up or completing an assignment. Because I, I, I'm going to go straight there and actually just start talking. You don't really. Leveling up is very um, nothing, right? Like player level. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed. Yeah. Like because it just happens in the um, in the uh, mission end screen. Your blue level just sort of it just goes around in a circle. The number just goes up. It's not like plastered on the screen. Um, and they definitely yeah, up they, really... they up the feedback, you know, for like performance levels, like season levels, because they get a whole screen for that. It's like here's your points, yeah. and then it's like. It shows your rewards and all that crap. Um, so, but it's like three different levels. Well, actually, like there's like five different levels though in the game, isn't there? You got player level, you got your dwarf like, class level, um, perf- like season pass level, performance pass level, uh, cosmetic mastery, which is the shop, yeah. and yeah, forge mastery. Forge. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I think it's and fairly obvious what the most rewarding one is. <laughs> yeah, and other than the season pass, I mean, right. Generally, yeah, leveling up your character, you kind of just like level up, and eventually you realize you're close to level twenty-five, and then you reach level twenty-five. You don't really make note of your character level other than that. And same with your blue level; it does just kind of go up, and eventually you'll hit a milestone, and that's when you actually pay attention. But like. I mean, you do kind of have promotions, at least. I think that that then pulls your attention towards uh, your actual player level, and, and not really your blue level. But yeah, no, not your already your player level. Your 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 dwarf level. Um, it, it it pulls that into the relevancy. Like, hey, 
look look at your your level 25 baby levels matter and then you have to do the assignments and that and it's I well, no, 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 it's, it's, it's not so much a case of levels matter as it is just those promotions matter what, what i like about it is that it's like your levels aren't sacred there's no like crazy like look you leveled up you're now level 17 instead of 16 it's like it's only every 25 that it actually means something like in like call of duty i swear like every level was like made to feel like very like, right. to release as much dopamine duty, as possible but then you also duty had prestiging that it, the call of duty was like if you grazed someone's ass cheek and then he got killed by someone else it would be like yeah, <laughs> yeah you well, exactly it. i mean well, I mean, I, I, you know what, we can talk about that in a bit, because I just realised that's something that DOG kind of doesn't have. But um, when it comes to promotions and levels, it's like, I like the fact that the only time, the, the levels only mean something from time to time. It's not like all the time, it's like you just be desensitised your level otherwise, but the promotions actually matter, and it's actually like treated very well. You have to like go somewhere you have to do a whole assignment and then you have to go somewhere specific in the space rig and you get like a speech from Mission Control. It's like, it's this is like pretty theory. good. And it's like you work towards yeah, that. So proud of you. <laughs> well, you work towards ma- that more than you work towards just the next level because the next level doesn't matter. It's only when it's only when the next level is level 25. But even then, you still have to do the assignment. Um, so I like that DRG sort of forces you to get like... The, the feedback like the rewarding parts out of it it doesn't just happen it's not just just leveling up isn't special you, you need to sort of act on the part that makes it feel special which is actually completing a promotion assignment and yeah. sort of spending the money it's just like oh now i feel like i've accomplished something so otherwise it's, otherwise it's just um noise it's just useless feedback which, which i think is definitely worth mentioning due to people on the reddit you don't see anyone posting about their blue level reaching a level or their, their level reaching dwarf level three, right? You see everyone posting about all of their dwarves being bronze, silver, platinum, you know, and obviously legendary. The, those are the occasions people celebrate after a certain amount of promotions, not levels, really. Um, like, promotions are the only thing that actually makes people sit back and, like, look what I've done, and they decide to post it on the Reddit for like, everyone to see. Like, congrats, dude. Nice job. Yeah, you did it. Wow, great job, nice, rock and stone. Yeah, yeah, but then you you can also reach a point, and it, it, here we go again. You can reach a point where even the promotions stop feeling so sacred, and then oh, are you gonna hit that marrow? Yeah, yeah. And then you reach a point where, because obviously the blue levels can mean something, but only to a point. It's like I, I think the final title is like really early. It's like level one hundred. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's also or level 100 is also when you know you stop getting rewarded for your blue levels as well. That stops being like a a thing. It's when you get scale upgrade, get all that, and there's nothing else after it. So, so you do. What I'm getting at here is the, the the rewarding aspects are much more individualized, but that means they're also much more limited. It's limited to those prestige assignments, which are what the blue levels reward you. You get rewarded for, and it's also limited to your promotions. Which are what the class levels really just what do you get from? Which you know, it's, it's kind of weird because all assignments is is you playing the game, but it's just giving you that little bit of extra feedback, like you're yeah. working towards something. Yeah, it's like as a as a congratulations for playing the game to this point. He's played the game. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Pardon me. <laughs> Thank you. And then, like, you promote to allow yourself to play the game with your character. So playing the game rewards you for playing the game, which is uh, a bit interesting. Well, it kind of has to, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, when your rewards are elsewhere, that's uh, pretty bad. The rewards I'm, I'm are the friends it. you make along the way. Your reward for reaching like, um... uh, Legendary 3 is a uh, NFT. Oh, my with, God. Uh, with a, a dwarf cock. What? A, a... It's dwarf penis. Um, congratulations! Congratulations! You got now, the dwarf penis NFT. <laughs> now I hope that these NFTs are worth something, and then make a couple quid. It's like you know that kind of thing doesn't motivate anyone because they're not retarded. But um, okay, for people that play the game um, and enjoy playing the game, the best thing to do to encourage that behavior and reward that behavior 
is to let them play the game <laughs> with a bit more meaning behind it now. Yeah. But yeah, and and as you mentioned, does wear out. Yeah, it does. It does end um, the reward feedback for leveling up and promoting and all that. It does end. Which yeah, is our biggest issue. Well, it, but it, yeah, but it's, it it came from what I think was a better decision. Instead of just overloading you with feedback all the time, making the game a constant numbing dopamine release, the sort of rewarding the times when you actually feel rewarded for your what you put in is much more like i said individualized but that by nature makes it more limited individualized in that it's like individual promotion tiers and individual rewards which means it's capped because you can only have so much of that unless they were to just keep making more and more um yeah but it still makes those things better on their own i think um Shit, you mean forget something? Oh, that's what I was going to say. Part of me, though, almost wishes, though, like something like, um, like I didn't get Scale Brigade, like when it was, when you didn't need to be a certain level, but I was already over the level required at the time, you know, yeah. even when it wasn't level caps. Which is the wildest thing. I don't get why, because there was already a thing in level 100, wasn't there? Why? Yeah, it's black, <laughs> because they just don't want to move beyond it for some reason. That was the, that was the first sign. Yeah, they're not willing to invest in players over level 100 blue level, which, I mean, it sounds bad when I put it like that, but that is the case. <laughs> they're not they're not willing to stretch out their content to people that play the game longer than that. Like, and yeah, and then Axis Cronus will come along and then like speak for the entire like long term player community. By the way, I need to I need to make things clear. I do not dislike. Reapy Ron or Axis Chronos, right? <laughs> they just—I need to be clear. But they, Axis Chronos has said a lot of things that I disagree with. That's, um, and something he said recently was something along the lines of. So this is sort of paraphrasing here. I'm not quoting, right? I need to make that clear I'm as well. I'm um, a stinky poopoo head. Oh, it was something along the lines of, right? Like players that sort of his level are just happy sort of playing the game as is I, I know see i'm actually sort of forgetting sort of really the point of it but this is something that's been echoed i think by a few sort of veteran players and it's not something that i really i, I share the um notion not really. but i would never say it right i would never put it, it forward as my position because i think that we can do better i think i think it's just interesting how they're turning down attention and rewards being given to them like like they are actively turning down the game liking them or like you know like here thanks for playing this game they're like no i don't want that oh yeah it was, okay so the access kind of thing was more just about he's like satisfied just playing the game just as a shooter i don't know it was weird it was a weird thing to say he seemed to sort of just completely disregard promotions entirely, is what it felt like. But that's not really what he said. So I don't really want to really be calling him out. But it was I just it was just the general notion that has gone around, and I don't really Axis, appreciate it. Thanks to Kronos, um, he did a video. Uh, I think it was called like The Grind of DOG or something like that, and it was like one of his big favourite ones. But he kind of made the point that, like... And this isn't a point generally, it's just, just the way he sees the game. He doesn't... And I don't think he made this point particularly, but he doesn't actually care about like any of the leveling in the game at all. He only cares about being better than he was the last game and just improving constantly. That is his form of progression, which I assume is what he meant by that, really. Yeah. As far as playing it as a shooter is concerned, nothing they could really do or nothing really matters because he, he finds his own levels in his skill. Um yeah, which, which is something that I've tried which, to sort of... I've tried game, to go down that road, and it's really... It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got to have a certain, like, mindset to do that. I don't uh, have and, it, uh, I guess. Uh, uh, I think I, I kind of want to... I don't want to bring it back, but I want to tie this into... What was the name of the podcast? It's like, how rewarding is it, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think the game does reward you in being good statistic well yeah i mean right? there's the obvious reward of like it's um because it, i think it's pretty hard for a game to fail in this aspect but you always it, it's always obvious when you're doing well 
and that alone feels yeah. rewarding. It's pretty hard for a game to not communicate that because yeah, it means you're just also... killing things efficiently and not dying in very high intensity scenarios. You can tell yeah. when that happens, you're like, oh, I'm good at this. <laughs> Yeah, but then it, that is like on the metaphysical level. But I mean the literal, physical, well, the e-physical version. That if you are better at the game, you can do higher hazards. Therefore, you earn more from your mission. That is the so. It's very literal. It rewards you. Yeah, literal. It yeah, it rewards you for being better. Literally. You get more minerals, you get more gold, you get more XP. If you are better, you can play harder hazards and you get more. Same with like the double warnings and you know so forth. But like, well, it does straight up reward you for being it's better. A, okay, well, it's an interesting take because I, it's I think it's actually definitely less direct than most games because it's not in game, right? It's it's what you're talking about is actually not that literal you actually have to put together the fact that um oh me being able to play consistently on a higher hazard means that i'm better at the game i mean it's an obvious thing but the game isn't telling you that right yeah you're re obviously rewarded for higher hazard but you're not actually you're not actually rewarded for doing better say better than your teammates but that's because the, the yeah. rewards are shared um in, and it's the, also because, in a team scenario yeah the game is also not better than your teammates it's you and your teammates need to be better. No, but better that's how it should be, though, because it's meant yeah. to. That brings in a sense of camaraderie and stops things from feeling competitive. When you're competing for the most kills, that would, if the game promoted that, it would sort of go against the, um, the yeah, point. Which it does dabble in. Like I think they knew what they were doing when they showed your kill count, right? They knew. Yeah, but I think they can dabble in it harder, but in a way that won't actually damage the point of the game, because. Um, a lot of games do a thing where you sort of get like a a label or <laughs> in both like that kind of regard like obviously as mentioned some type of people just have to be wired in the way that like their progression is their skill and therefore the better they are the more rewarded they feel because they've gotten better and um, some games do actually struggle to do that some game easy or give them give players so much that you don't really feel better for being better like kind of cod i mean cods generally yeah if you do better you get like kill streaks and that so yeah i i did want to get into this yeah I but, like, like... yeah like uh you know you, you do better you do better and eventually you feel better but like in cod if you do like the best in the game or the worst you don't feel that much different because every kill rewards you the same. Or like it's just generally it's just the same well, experience. Hold on, isn't that sort of not really the case? Because like a lot of both PvP games have like leaderboards and they might even have like um like the top three players at the end like shown and you do like stupid little dances or whatever. Yeah, but DLG nice. kind of does that for everyone inherently because there's only a maximum of four players and they're all yeah. there on the mission end screen. The only difference is whether you're alive or dead. Um, but I think they can go a little bit beyond that, but not in a way that introduces any kind of competitivity. Because well, well, no, well, let should. me uh, do the pitch. So s some games have like a... I don't know what you call it. It's not badges, but you sort of get like a, like a, a title at the end of a game just to sort of represent what you did the best at in that game Halo. but it covers no 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 no. Halo doesn't what did and you wouldn't know this I guess but where I got this from was uh, Titanfall's uh, Frontier Defense which was the, the PvE mode good. yeah I think Overwatch does so where it's like this person got the most kills or this person got the most revives obviously you can see these stats but if they were to be more like this guy was the the healer for this mission or whatever and you sort of get like a nice little icon it's just some extra yeah. feedback but it's not like about getting more it's like oh this person got the, the most kills this person got the second most kills no 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 everyone gets like the thing they did the best at something yeah which yeah. is what's often what happened when I played Overwatch I'd get like the most like I don't know, like turret kills if I played Tori on it it'd be like such petty shit yeah but, but like... you can also get like the most weak point kills as well yeah. things like that it can get quite specific so there's always a way for 
everyone's done some, everyone's contributed something, and it sort of shows that. It... Well, I d- I don't really, I don't really see a universe where that would help anyone or make anyone feel better. It it wouldn't it wouldn't add anything to the experience, like like because first of all, people could play very similar most of the time, but also like the classes are the classes it's like if a mercy got max healing like shock horror right if well yeah i suppose the um like, the community sort if, of done this themselves haven't they yeah it's like, like scout if, will if get drill... the most minerals mined and yeah, like, no, gunner and might have the most revives or something will get the most melee kills like it will it will be so constantly the same thing that it's not worth adding it's basically the same as what's currently in the game where more often than not engineer most kills uh, gunner second uh, driller third and then scout fourth like sure it can vary time to time but like if those are the things you're looking at it doesn't mean anything you know what I mean that those are just it just it doesn't say anything about the player like oh wow that that driller got the most like explosive kills like who, who could have saw that coming like it's, just, it's not saying anything no one is, is gaining from the experience there's no identity being gathered by that like it's not like the titles that we want or anything it's just a nothing statement um i don't think it would reward anyone in particular um, no or like objective done thing i mean i i think they should add an objective objective thing <laughs> where it, it's like people that work towards the objective i don't know how they do it but... yeah because well it's only because so the mission end screen is sort of um there are four stats that it shows but only three of those are positives. And to me, the community is sort of trying to divide them like among the classes. But it would be nice if everyone had... It's like, it wasn't the point, but the community has done it themselves. But there's not a fourth like positive stat to attribute to someone. Because like, yeah. it's like Engineer gets the most kills. Gunner probably gets the most revives, but I don't think that one's actually that like definitive. Um, yeah, and then Scout so usually gets the most mining done. But then the other stat is just how many times you went down. There's yeah, not a four positive one. And if there was a four positive one, then the, the community the community would like take all the information and like try and actually figure out who does the best at what. But the fact that it's three and then one instead of four good things and then just down on the uh, tagged on at the end. Yeah. It's like oh, pe- so people now focus on who gets it. the most downs and it's usually yeah. scout. Um which is really sad. But I, I don't know. I think the, I think the it's fine because once again, as mentioned, you know, the final screen doesn't really feel that special. I mean, it's, it feels nice. You know, I like the you know moats and all that you do at the end. But like as mentioned, you know, you get the XP, you get the circle tipped up, and you kind of leave. Like I mean, maybe sometimes if you've got a pot of gold Crassius, you'll post it on the Reddit something like that. But otherwise, you know, you don't really gather any information from it. Like, if you're testing out a build, have you ever actually looked at your kills at the end of the mission to, like, kind of weigh no. it? No. Like, yeah. Like, it doesn't really say that much. Because also, if people join halfway through the game, it, you know, their stats don't mean anything. They weren't there the whole time. You can't compare anything. Like, unless they died of an absolute crap time. Then, you know, it says something. But, it, you know, it, it doesn't... It's kind of an empty feature yeah but that's why the game is to feel more rewarding in actual in practice rather than in conclusion and i think it sort of replicates it replicates what a lot of um shooters do in a much more um tangible way where a lot of shooter games they have all this um all this feedback you know oh we got 100 points for a kill or like um or like you get like a special hit marker for getting like a critical hit like a headshot Right, you know, yeah. like in Halo, it's like a different sound effect and visual effect when you kill, you get a headshot kill, or you get points for getting an assist or something. DRG sort of does all of that, but without putting numbers on your screen. Telling you. Well, it, it tells you, but by things actually just happening in game, um, which is why, like, honestly, like just. Maybe not death animations, but just the general just feel and feedback of weapons just hitting enemies and sound effects and blood and enemy ragdolls. It all just comes together to make it's everything just... feel satisfying. Like armor breaking off enemies, explosions like launching enemy bodies away from, you know, blast. It's just 
and it all went together. Even thing. just like the sound effects of mining are, is very satisfying. So you feel like you're doing something. Yeah, like in other games, you know, it's mainly most of the time you're just kind of shooting, and especially Halo, which it could get into. But like, you honestly, I could barely tell what I'm even hitting. It's kind of just an empty experience shooting, like most games. But then, like you know, you'll get like the rewarding. But dang, we wow! Once you kill. But there's no, right? there's no sound effect when you kill an enemy in TRG. There's that like, there's like the splodge of their insides curdling, I suppose, yeah, well, and their like death the cries. But that's yeah. what it should be. It's more. It's somehow more realistic. Well, that's the thing. It's because honestly, most of the time. Because I it's not PVP. Even. Yeah, I forget there is even like health bars because they're so immersive in your combat. That you, like it doesn't feel like you're playing like an RPG or you're not playing. Play. Technically, the terms loose, but like you know, you, you kind of just you know you've killed something when they're like dead <laughs> or like it's writhing in agony or like flight sitting in the air. Like, like you don't really like it's not like a hit marker or a uh, you know a point that appears on your screen. Like, I just you I just... just think it's cool that the RG is like weirdly realistic in that sense. In that all of the feedback comes from what's happening in the game world. It's not a realistic game, yeah. but the, the feedback isn't artificial, which is something that I really respect. There's no, like... Um, you don't get told anything in-game. There's no pop-ups that don't really make sense, except the, the only time that's not the case is like when you're actually claiming cosmetic rewards in a mission. That's the only time, because that's stuff that exists outside of the missions inherently, because you need to know what yeah. you got from the cargo crate or the machine event. So and it'll pop up. But apart from that, it's all natural. It's all part of what would be in... Yeah. If it was real, yeah. It would. it's all real, apart from those pop-ups. Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously the kind of blaring holographic things, that's just to gain people's attentions, because otherwise they'd never interact with anything, right? But then, yeah. you know, the thing that appears on the top of your screen, that kind of is a what we're saying the game doesn't really have that is a neuronic like ooh, kind of thing that appears right um at a reward because i do see cosmetics as the only real progression in the game <laughs> it's the only real reason why you should continue playing after like level 100 and you've got all the like overclocks like it's just cosmetics it's just making your dwarves look better and that's kind of what those events do most of the time. I mean, they well, no, do I was, I was never saying that all of that feedback in the missions is what's going to keep you playing because it doesn't in another shooter game where it's more artificial. I don't want to keep playing just because I'm seeing the numbers and I don't necessarily want to keep playing just because it feels good to shoot a bug. I just think DLG does that better than most games because it's just, it just feels less artificial. It, it just feels cooler but it's not like a reason to keep playing it's just what makes playing feel good um the actual playing part um yeah the, the shooter game what makes that feel good to play and yeah as i mentioned not even just the shooting part the mining part the drilling part all that kind of stuff it just always plays into sam i mean this yeah I, I, want, I mean i want to do kind of i want to do an episode on sound but like sound and music so it's not just like oh just sound design that's a bit limited although we could talk for, about that for a while but sound and music and just sort of use in game that'll be an episode though there's definitely enough there um down the list yeah Same. of course it is in my list of 24 ideas do you think music wasn't there <laughs> like that was something i left out that's something i didn't think of that's something that i needed to be reminded about <laughs> no Shush. Yeah. Uh, well, well yeah, I mean, what's what's next, Chief? What's next, Chief? Um, actually, I think I do want to do this because this is actually this could lean more towards criticism, actually. Um, oh, actually, no, no, I don't think so. So, boss fights and events and how sort of satisfying they are because I think it's something that um, well, maybe it doesn't really set Deep Rock apart, but sort of like. It's both. I'm, I'm taking into account both random encounters and sort of the um, the set in stone boss fights that you would encounter, um, and it is kind of weird that I think the random ones are definitely less satisfying 
Um, I, but the core I'm lock, let's start with the core lock is what I was thinking of. Um, no, I'm going to throw all mine out there first. Um, the caretaker and the machine events are all inherently rewarding upon completion. They're... It helps that they basically detonate once hmm. they're done. Well, the caretaker's a weird one because I don't think the caretaker feels very good to shoot because it's just a big yeah, brick. I'm not saying, but it's I'm the not explosion. Saying them is fun. Was, but the, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's finishing the foe because I think the dreadnoughts are the opposite. I think fighting them, they're like the best. Yes, the I game. was going to say but this as well. On killing them, there's, there's not much to say. No, no, it's, the dreadnoughts' it's, deaths it's, aren't that impressive, really. They're based, They're just. Like a normal grunt, <laughs> they just well, like Praetorian. Not even that. Praetorians leave a cloud. They just they just kind of die, which I feel like should be something they should tap into because they're clearly like more advanced Praetorians. They should at least release something upon death, right? Like I've always felt weird walking through a dead Praetorian's body and not having something bad happen to me. Like it, I, I never really understood that. But they uh, should sort of like. Like sort of spaz out and like explode from the inside, like combust. Yeah, I mean, a very good way of making finishing a fight uh, end, which they often apply, is just make them explode. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think the, I think yeah, the dreadnoughts don't do that because there's always multiple of them in the mission, yeah. and it's like they don't want to. It's not necessarily an overload, but it's like they don't. You know, there's no difference between the first and the last one. That's the thing. But in like industrial yeah. sabotage and escort duty, the sort of the boss part is the only one, and it's the final part of the mission. Because like even the Heartstone, I'd Grand say, is quite. It, I, I like. I I generally like the whole end of escort duty, divorced from when you have to. Really, like you know, when it when shit goes off the rails and it's like Doretta is just a, a problem. Because I don't, when you don't have to think about Doretta that much, I, I'm a big fan of the um, escort duty finale. Obviously, you have to think about her in the sense of you have to destroy the rocks and the beamers and all that stuff. But still, the Heartstone, when you actually get to the end, there's still like a big, you know, effect. It's meant to be something that your brain reads. It's like, oh, did it? Yeah. <laughs> it's still meant to be Plus. like that. Plus, like, like all of them, um, events and all, um, like the machine events, their grand explosion clears the area. You're done. The the grand high action thing ends <laughs> with the like the, the the killing of it. Even obviously machine events, enemies will respawn and come back later. For that moment, you're okay. Except for Trit Light for some reason. Uh, Trit Light. It is Trilight, isn't it? Yeah, but so, Trilight's yeah, quite satisfying. I mean, as long as you're not getting constantly harassed, Trilight itself is quite satisfying to do. Um, I, s- I suppose. Only I mean, even Curse, like, it's like it, it's like attention to detail that it, it, it's like kind of obvious, but you don't really think about. Like even the Curse like ones, which I consider probably the least satisfying overall, because like Ebonite's just fun, and the Omen is just so intense and it has good feedback because like, you've got like. A Bright green and weak spots, and they explode once you destroy them. And the whole thing feels pretty good. Like a theme here. <laughs> but the curse site, it yeah, it's true. But the, but even the curse site though, it's not, it's not like much of a dopamine release. But there's still good attention to detail there. When you put the sample curse site oh, yeah. fragments yeah. in, it grinds them up. You know, you it, yeah. you see it happen. So it's like, oh, that's, that's neat. But that's not what you're is doing it for. Half an hour waiting for the things to spawn. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Um, yeah, but I mean, but yeah. they really knocked out the park though with the caretaker though. <laughs> yeah, they? that's I mean, great. Well, as far as it ending, it like falling down looks awesome. Its explosion, I could do with it launching people further. If anything. oh, if you stand in it, all... it's a different story. <laughs> but the whole right, thing, yeah. the whole yeah, thing, because it's like it explodes and it slowly the opens the big clanking like sound effect and the smoke yeah. rising and off the of it. Staircase rising out of that, and then yeah. It's, it's it's actually it's, beautiful. Like we, I think we definitely picked up on it when we first saw it, but I don't think we've properly given the credit it deserves. Like, just it's, it's a weird, but it's a weird it's, thing to focus on the design of. It's just because it's got the best death in the game, the caretaker. Yeah, it's the grandest ending, which makes sense considering it, it felt like a grand ending. Um, not just to the mission because the mission didn't feel that grand until the very end, but. Uh, it was just, yeah. I don't know. 
it like, it really does feel like it does for some just feel like the end, even though it's seemingly far from it, which kind of makes it feel weird. But yeah, yeah it's just because of how grand the ending of the caretaker is. Uh, which if, if if anything, it makes it feel weird that then you have to, you know, do the leaving like you know Molly running away, enemy spawning. I feel like how surreal it would feel if nothing spawns in while you leave. Like you well, killing the caretaker, uh, you just kind of like walk out of. There. I think that's what it should. I think that's what industrial sabotage should be. I think that's actually a mission I would almost, I would be tempted to cut the extraction part out of, because it sort of almost invalidates the actual ending, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, uh, but extraction is a very important part still. That's arguably the real ending of the mission to me, and that sort of brings it all together. You know, you're supposed to work together to get to the end. That's why it's supposed to. It's meant to. It's actually getting out alive is meant to feel more rewarding than what you know the end screen actually gives you. You're meant yeah, to... or even like completing the mission. Really, it's just yeah, the the great fight to leave is like the ending of the mission, and it's just the culmination. Yeah, and it does feel story. better when you're with other people. I'll give it yeah. that because. I don't really think about Snatcher that much when I'm playing on my own, which is most of the time. But I want to actually come back to the, uh, well, the bosses, because that's the, that's where we, how we got here. Because um, they don't actually necessarily, uh, I, I said at first, I think sort of the random ones that you encounter aren't quite as grand or explosive. And I think um, what I mean by that, I, I almost framed it as I was going to get to this as a criticism, but I don't think that's what I'm going to do at all. I, I like the fact that they didn't just take every boss to be just a dopamine release. It's just like it dies in a grand like, blaze of fury. Like, there's a big contrast between like the ne- nemesis and the caretaker. And the caretaker is probably the biggest, one of the biggest dopamine releases in the game for actually killing something, for actually accomplishing yeah. a task. But the nemesis is much more ominous. You know, you've almost yeah, feel like you've set something in motion more than you've actually yeah, defeated a, a, a the accomplished nemesis- something. The nemesis is like uh, it's like when you kill a boss, or it's like it's I don't know, in a game or like in a show or anime, realistically. But like it's like they're strong, but they're not the top. And as they're like dying, they leave like some ominous final words. That's what killing a nemesis is like. It's like sure you've dealt with the current threat, but there's something like coming. And most of the time in in this game, it's the fact that you're about to get phased. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's that's um, that. That, that, as well as the voice line, sort of comes together to make it... It's a different kind of feedback, where it's actually like... you feel, When you kill a nemesis, you almost feel like you're not done. It's like, yeah. it's not you're over. Not. It doesn't feel like it's over. That's the whole point. The nemesis' yeah. death is sort of designed to make it feel like you haven't actually won. Um, yeah. You've which is really a really cool then, idea. You, like, you, you know, and, and he is not dead, you're going to get phase bombs. But then if you look at it, like, outwardly, you realise... The rivals are still a thing. You're still gonna have to fight tons more nemesises. You won this. And I, fight I think that's. That they you know may what? I think that might be why it's not actually treated as a boss fight. Because I think yeah. that de- those death parts definitely feel intentional. So I would almost put forward the idea that they didn't include it. Like it shows that it flashes on screen. It's like oh, the nemesis is here, and it's like got a a, a bar, like a health bar, um, because then it would feel too much like an accomplishment for killing it. And that's also why you don't get rewarded it's meant to just convey a feeling more than anything um yeah and then sort of mm-hmm. the other two the other two random bosses also serve different purposes where the core lock is yeah. definitely like a very straightforward you get treasure for killing it um and then betsy is like the reward is an ally um or prospector well prospect is not a boss I mean, it's not a boss. It's not a boss fight. It's, it's just as much as a boss as a caretaker, and you can't fight me on that. Exactly. No, it's you obviously can't. not just as much. It's got no one is... No, no, no. The numbers, it is man. a object that spawns things to fight you. That is what the caretaker is. That's what the prospector is. If the prospect is not a boss fight, the caretaker isn't. Both has a boss health bar at the top. You could fight me all you want. I'm right. That's good. That's damn near the worst take I've ever heard. Um, uh, hmm. Well, that I guess I suppose that brings us to the events we didn't sort of cover. Then that those silly guys. They all give. Yeah, they all give you data cells as well. But I, like, like 
now we will get to some criticisms, right? Because um, data deposits, I think they don't have very good feedback at all. And I can we, sort of put that down to I often forget to actually go and get the data cell. We did do that, actually, it, yeah. Well, we, did, we kind of did that on purpose, but it doesn't... It's very non-communicative to me. I don't think the data like the data yeah, deposit cause... event is a good one in that sense. No, it, it confuses me so much uh, that you then defend the other thing. Like, you defend the little shitting pod, and so you actively are not near the giant, grand robotic structure yeah like, and it's almost like it's trying to be a mini caretaker as well like it's sort of it's there's not much sound it's sort of just like slowly opens up but it's like it's nowhere near as still nowhere near as grand it's just a little cube and you often miss it too you know yeah i i don't know i think i think the data deposits are like one of the worst designed parts of the game full stop like, and I think I the other two disagree. definitely outshine it the other two in the same category yeah. the prospect is much I mean, more satisfying to kill and it the um, you better. Um, yeah, and the 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 router, the rival signal event is just much more engaging, I guess. And the hacking yeah, feels pretty I good. They, it's quite true. They sort of trivialised it, it but, um, but still better. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah, I think data deposits are the worst conceptually and executed thing in the game, in, in the entire game. I, I mean, Nero Lasso was a was. Better executed than fucking data. data. Neuro lasso, <laughs> holy shit! Like, it's really it's terrible. Yeah, because at least neuro lasso is you is usable. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but, um, yeah. that's a take that I thought you would disagree with. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get a point. Uh, get across the point that I absolutely fucking despise uh, data deposits, um, and every time there's one in the mission, I actively sigh. Um, I've got to say, never seen someone um, compliment them. <laughs> yeah, because there is nothing to compliment. Because that's also the worst part about uh, the other one, the fucking big mission with two of them in. You know, industrial sabotage. They decided what was the worst mechanic we made this season. Oh, the data deposits. Yeah, well, that's yeah. the thing. I, I think those are designed. I think those parts are designed to not be too satisfying because it's just meant to be the caretaker that is. So yeah, they sort of took that part of it and turned it into its own event. Which is like what? I don't know if I yeah. agree with this decision. I think this might be slightly misguided. <laughs> yeah. So thank fuck they added the prospector. So then at least there was one somewhat enjoyable event um, in that season. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, man. I think, I think generally they are very good at rewarding you at the end of grand events with some form of explosion. Be that literal or just kind of like a pulsating wave that kills everything in the area. Or just, I don't know... Uh, I mean, what what does the Korok does kind of burst into the shards, doesn't it? The uh, Betsy does kind of like spark and like collapse and make lots of sounds. Like everything does have some form of, you know, dying. That's <laughs> quite grand. Except the Dreadnoughts. Uh, they kind of just they're like a spider when they die. They just kind of crawl. Their arms and legs kind of shrink into themselves and then they just dissipate into the nothingness of void. They... Yeah. Yeah, well, I do obviously I do get why, but I feel like they could literally maybe just do with like that good incendiary grenade, basically going off whenever they on <laughs> their body, just just something like that. It would just tick me in the right way in the head, just like yeah, tick you with right way in the head, <laughs> just because it just feels wrong that these things that are like the bigger, grander version of Praetorians don't release the same thing a Praetorian does, or like it's it's less. So, you know, well, it's because it's, it's because it's meant to be over, you know. You've you've done the hard work. It's I know. Not meant to be a hazardous but, death. But I, 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 I that's more of a um that's more of a, a developmental decision than like a. It's probably not law accurate, you know. Yeah. <laughs> not everything in the game has to represent the you. truth of the law. Um, but just I want to very briefly bring it back to like. The, the feedback thing because I mentioned like you often in normal uh, PvP games you often get like particular feedback for getting headshots and things like that 
Well, once again, the IG does something similar, but it's sort of incorporated naturally. We sort of have like, like exposed parts of, of enemies that sort of um. Well, first of all, they glow, so you know that they're weak point. But they also like flash when you hit them. But it's like a natural reaction. Yeah, to and be hit. you do more damage, so you're rewarded in doing it. Literally like, as like well. the the warden uh, weak point, I think, in particular, and like the uh, Mactera sort of Mactera weak points. Definitely, they've got this written all over them. Um, like the goo bomber sacks burst when you destroy them. That's feedback right there. But it's it's like naturally incorporated. I just think it's very well done. Um, perhaps something that isn't so natural though is the performance pass, right? Mm. And this is no, no. This isn't going to be a criticism because I think they handled it well. Where it was almost the company itself, DRG, trying to you know, in like fabricate um, like a, a sense of like reward for the dwarves, you know. But I think yeah. they succeeded, and it like it works under that guys because they kind of just wanted to do a battle pass right and they did it well but you know you've exposed why they did it and i completely understand it and it's worked in the player retention and i can speak for this and even you can before was terrible or at least it's nothing compared to what it probably has been where you would get the update everyone would play for like a week or two and then it would disappear and then, like, even people that like Deep Rock, I mean, probably not for the case for, like, some people like Axis Chronos or whatever, but, like, generally, people didn't Pardon really me? stick around after the update. That It would become one of the games where you just kind of play whenever an update occurred. It's, it's, it definitely was for us. But um, that's what they strive to change with the seasonal... Not seasonal model, um, but the season pass. The season pass itself is to fight people kind of disappearing. Because even then, some people would just come out every week or so. Like, that was actually a main criticism that I haven't seen since. That, uh, you know, people only had incentive to play once per week. Uh, just hop on, do the the weekly court hunt, stop playing. Or, the, you know, the other one, Mineral One as well. And then you had no reason to play more than that. Uh, nothing incentivized you to do it. But with the season well, pass, I... uh, you have your daily missions, yes. first of all. Well, first of all, the daily uh, missions were a really great addition. Um, I just yeah. wish they lasted beyond the pass itself that's just a me that's a me thing though right yeah because i um i wish i just i wish i had incentive to do the daily missions after i finished the pass because a majority of my time i've still completed the pass i think when the pass completed the daily missions should reward you with like a little tiny amount of minerals or just some coins I, I don't think it should continue unless obviously you haven't got all the scripts yet. Then well, I suppose it will scripts, help you get but... more money if you do them because you can still get credits, sure, like the, but the, it's, the it's... infinite reward. So doing the challenges will help you get more credits, but it's not a lot. You know? Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a leap in logic, and it's the kind of leap in logic that, while true, people won't think about or care. They'll they'll see the fact that they're getting XP and they don't need it. I just realised. I just realised that Axis Chronos probably loves that you get a lot of minerals in the past. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but he made a point that I actually agree with though. Um, and I'm sort of prepared yeah. to move this away. Not actually move this away from the main topic, but we can be a little bit looser now because this isn't as related. So it was about um the weekly thing, um and how he actually kind of disapproves more than he approves of like the weekly priority assignment and weekly core hunt because he doesn't think it's really like a good he doesn't think it's good that that's the reason that you would play if that's all you're coming back for it's just those assignments he doesn't he's like basically if that's all you're coming back for you don't actually like the game enough which i think i agree with if that's all you're coming back for no, I think you can you can fuck right off. Um, first of all, no, no, because... but if that's all you do with DRG, no, no, because you play it a little bit less than that. But you don't just come back just to do those assignments and that's it. You do other things. I did though. When that was like the only thing to do, that is all I did. When I felt like playing the game, I I even just I just came on, and it's like you can't that you don't like the game if you're fucking playing it. Don't gatekeep like that. I'm sorry, but like, sure, 
I, I, I can't spend my entire life playing this one game. No, 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 no. It's about like the. It's it's more the idea of um, it's a little bit weird that you only you basically only come back to play when you're told to. No, it's not weird because you're not told to. You're given a reason to. You're not. You're not. You're not like. Come here, come here, boy. You're like, um, hey, here, have a treat. Like it's like, okay, I gain something from playing now instead of normally when you wouldn't right normally i'll just be playing and like sure i'm playing the game and sure that should be enough i imagine is his point but like sometimes it isn't enough to just play the game maybe i want to play another game but like i need incentive to play deep brook over something else and the weekly priorities was that it was like the only time of the week you know it was deep brook day every thursday would come around and we'd all go on deep brook um, because we actually had something to do, missions to do, things to gain, so then we had pause so we could, you know, do machine events. Like, it was the only time where we actually had something we all had to do and a reason to play. Like, sure, you could play without it, and sometimes you would. You would stick around. But it, it's it's just, like, a treat. So, like, hey, if you play now, you get a treat. And then once you've eaten the treat, being the, you know, the core hunt or priority assignment you don't need to stick around there's no incentive over playing other games which are also bear in mind probably doing the same thing but just more commonly you know like i mean i don't know uh, apex stuff is well, like oh yeah new um, skins new events new all that like i don't know yeah. i don't know if you're missing the point or if i actually disagree with him and i'm just interpreting it in a different way because that's well, that, really... no, what I said is what he said, but I think I agree with it in a different way, where I think that you're you're still playing it because you like the game, um, and it's like yeah. it's it, there's a difference I between be there's a difference between no no like there's it. a difference between the incentive and you're just playing it to get those things. You're, you're more so... Play, it's, I think it's very specific, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when it comes down to you play it because the week the assignments have come back, it's literally because the incentive exists. It's not because you really want those credits or crafting materials or those matrix cores. It's literally just it's because, because... It's just because there's an incentive. It doesn't actually matter what it, you get in the end. It's just because it's, you're doing well, something. First of all, I think it, it, it's all of them, right? It's, all, this whole, it it's the whole just, thing. It, it is it is just something for everyone if you just need blank matrix cores you play it if you want if you need more minerals you play it need more credits you play it just need something to do you'll play it it gives everyone something to do once a week right and yeah and i think that's what assignments are good going. for and um, that's why i like assignments i think they're good for that that's what they that's why they yeah. exist basically like i mean i would not i would probably not still be playing the game if it wasn't for the assignments because I would have just never played the game, pretty much. And I and all I when I did the game when the seasons come out, I wouldn't have. I mean, if the assignments didn't exist, I don't know how I would get like, Black Matrix cores, or whatever. But like, you know, it's just that's as well. I'd come on so I could get Black Matrix cores and that for when I do want to play the game, or I'd have them all in reserve, which I'm only just about chipped away at. Like, it's just well, I I don't know. basically, like, I think what it is is that there's two extremes, and they're both strike me as quite hollow where the one on one end it's like you only play for the gameplay nothing outside the missions matters to you i think that's very hollow but then there's also the side where only what's outside of the missions matters to you which i always think is very hollow i think the assignments actually are what bring the middle ground to the I, forefront where it's i don't it's know how you both can... it's like because you don't get rewarded for every stage of an assignment you don't have to. It's just the fact that you're doing something makes everything about how, it feel better to play. I don't know how any, how anyone could play a game where that's either either of those things are what they do. Like I don't know how you could play a game where. Well, we played like, Deep Rock when it was that. I think. I think we played it a little bit pre-assignments. <laughs> sure, a little bit. But that wasn't a good time like, for the I'm, game. I'm, I'm it wasn't in a good place then, obviously. Yeah, but like, there's a reason why we didn't play it non-stop, and I have no memories of it. But like, like the game. If you you don't you shouldn't give a shit you you wouldn't give a shit normal people wouldn't care about minerals about cosmetics about this the, like uh, pass and all of that if they don't enjoy playing the game right like um, if if you don't 
enjoyed just playing the game, then you shouldn't enjoy any of that. And I don't know how people could do that. You have to enjoy the game to enjoy the rest of the stuff. While also the other way, I think, is more possible and reasonable, since I think Axis Chronos is probably one of them. But, like, you, you, you need support to enjoy the game. Gameplay isn't just everything, right? Like, it's the same with, like, Halo. Gameplay-wise, it's actually, or well, Halo Infinite, it's pretty good, right? I mean, I don't like it, but, like, you know, it's, it's not buggy. The game's, uh, you know, it runs well, looks good, all of that. But there is nothing but emptiness outside of it. Which is what I guess Axis Chronos wants. He doesn't. He doesn't want. Well, I the don't. Fucking no, no. Chronos. Okay, I don't think he's calling to remove unlocks or anything. Right. I just don't. Um, I think I don't know if I'm. Like I said, I don't know if I'm. I might be misinterpreting what he said. Um, but I almost. I do like to sort of um take takes that don't necessarily come from a single person, but still like get angry at them. I like getting angry at sort of takes that could exist. And it's sort of like the takes that um, basically... Well, I mean, I, I don't think... I think that is the uh, lesser of the two evils, though. I think the extreme where you just where you just really like playing the game is probably better than the one where you you don't actually yeah. care about the gameplay. Um, I think that that is that is more than that is more than believable. Because I lean more enough. towards that than the middle ground. Yeah, but I I don't think if that is the case, and now I am now gatekeeping the third game ship for. But like, if all you care about is playing the game inside the the sphere of shooting grunts, if you don't give a shit about anything outside of that, so what? that you don't like the weekly pass like it doesn't affect you but it will boost players everywhere else right <laughs> like yeah it's just like you know it is once again i credit to be one of the reasons i still play the game it was the weekly content like and if it was like a constant stream or something then i probably also wouldn't play, play, play the game because i would have played myself to death uh, probably at some point or just it lost all value or something i don't know i think how it is fine, how it was, wasn't perfect, Yeah, it was good enough. It's also... They noticed that. DRG's development is essentially built around just giving players incentives. Yeah. Because they is. know that's, that their game is... They know the game is just essentially a loop, and it's never going to have a dedicated campaign. Because um, yeah. like, a dedicated campaign can be extremely like um, singular and contained, but you're playing it for more than just the gameplay still it's not like the other reasons exist outside of it it's still it's the story within it it's the other component but it's also not just gameplay but deep rock without incentives is just gameplay so that's what they that's essentially the entire point of them still working on the game is to keep giving reason people reasons to play um yeah like if so it, it can't be dismissed could... basically it's what i'm saying unlocks if... and progression cannot be dismissed because they are actually essential from yeah. ghost ship's perspective was enough they just should stop updating it yeah they should just they stay, they're done they're done they were done they could have stopped like probably when they launched the game that was it game done <laughs> yeah like, they didn't need to add any more of that if gameplay is enough it's, it's kind of cool though because well, it's not very cool so what I'm about to say might actually be taken really badly. But Deep Rock is like by nature sort of made for live service, right? And that's why I think it would actually benefit from a very well, well think... executed live service. I'm and sorry, I don't think Harry. they quite cracked it yet. But no, but that's what when no, I say no, that the development is they, they only develop the game to give people incentives, that's essentially live service. It's based it's into not, the game's DNA it's not almost. Made for live service, it's made by live service. They have been live service since the game was a bunch of ones and zeros. Yeah, but sort of without realising it. Yeah, they they were probably... They were live service before that name was... So it, it was born for live service, not made for live service. Made implies that they really intended it, but it just sort of became... No, no, just is. It just is live service. It was live service before it was a thing. It's like yeah. God. Proc is the god of live service. It was just around before everything else, before it was even a term. Yeah. Although it seems that now they've really gone hard into that, it does feel like things have slowed down a bit, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Which is really weird. Um, but that's the only because I don't want to get into that now. Actually, 
I think I think it's something that I I really like once season three comes out that and I know this is very off topic at this point but that is going to be the one thing I need to hear out of their mouths that we are working towards shorter seasons um, that is like the only thing I couldn't I just I, don't if, want if to I, hear them say something like we think this was okay <laughs> <I> just <don't... laughs> yeah like I I mean I don't know if we could like you know if we just like bam to their streets. they don't need to apologize <laughs> they don't need to... like, yeah, like I, I just, I don't know. It's, it's just ridiculous how long this season is going to take, and we we're only going to see like because we are assuming that like we are even as we complain right now, we're assuming the content they're going to release is amazing, right? Like I'm assuming that they're going to nail everything, and that you know the the volume is also going to be at the right well as well. There's I mean, if it is a bio, I might be surprised if they didn't really make. I'd be surprised if a bio was actually. A bad um, addition. Yeah, I mean, so far we have our complaints with some of them, but you know, even, but even then, you know, some of the ones we dislike are still nice. Like, but uh, yeah, I think there's just <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing they I can really see them doing wrong. Well, I'm pretty confident because I do think the mission types are actually the easiest to fuck up. To botch, yeah, and also enemy types, I think, seems to be. It's, it's yeah, actually, that is true. That is true. And, and also events, in all fairness. Uh, <laughs> okay, everything. Everything, everything. everything they added in season one, they botched. However, everything they added in season two, they also kind of botched. Well, I don't think Industrial Sab Sabotage was actually botched. I think, but I think Escort Duty was botched in such a way that it immediately created fatigue for that type of mission. Yeah. Which is really unfortunate, because right. if Escort Duty didn't exist, Industrial Sabotage would be amazing. It's still pretty great, but it would be I amazing think... if Escort Duty didn't exist. <laughs> I think we've got to bear in mind that imagine if the, the script was flipped, right? Imagine if they chose Industrial Sabotage over um, Escort Duty, and Escort Duty became the big grand game mode of Season well, 1. It would have been better than Escort Duty is now. And it would have been really yeah. cool framing. It'd be like the season would have been themed around like journeying into like the core of Hoxies or something, on like yeah. a massive drill. It would have been really cool. You could take it the same way. Like it's they maybe they still come up with a robots idea, but this time you are using uh, Doretta, the icon of your like you know your company, and you're drilling or like heading towards. Um, and but Doretta isn't. It has a drill on it, but it's not. Its goal isn't to drill. It's like a portable. It's basically a tank. And you are taking this tank to attack, like, the rival's base or operations, or maybe a, a caretaker or something like that. Like, uh, maybe it is still robots, but it's just taken in a more director approach. I think that, I would prefer that, if only because my biggest gaping issue with Escort Duty is that it's in every fucking um, assignment. assignment. Yeah. If it was just taken out, and it's what... Um, you know, industrial sabotage is now where it's its own separate. Oh, entity. okay. Sorry, um, I see you're getting it now. Yeah, I I would just prefer. It. Meanwhile, I think a a box standard um, normal mission version of industrial sabotage would probably just be a bit like a dreadnought fight. Like it it would just it would just be a a normal boss fight mission where you would. I mean, honestly, you could have like the same kind of. You could just have industrial sabotage, except maybe only one data deposit beforehand or something like that. Uh, but this would have been very weird to do before robots were a thing. So it would have been like a different type of enemy. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe in this, in this version, it's still the Omer and Heartstone. But Omer and the Omer and Heartstone summons tendrils or laser beams like the, uh, the caretaker does. But now it's the Omer and, um, and that's and that's what it is. And the Omer and is doing that. And you need to like... I don't know. Maybe just reach it. Just reach the omelette yeah. to start the flight. So That's I just realised I've got a pretty big topic here that we can still get into, and right. I mean, I'm fine with going a little bit long. Uh, I mean, I don't think I have anything going on. I need a piss. All right. Or well, you can go and piss. I could do with a drink. My mouth's starting to hurt. So it's mouth starting to hurt, guys. Why is your mouth hurting? Uh, I need a drink. <laughs> that doesn't shouldn't hurt. I very much need a drink. Pause. Wow, look, we're back. 
<laughs> Yay, my throat doesn't hurt as much. As much. Um, so, before we talk uh, uh, Oktoberfest, um, well, the, well, like I said, I've got another topic that could be uh, big. But something weird happened like, in the last couple of days for DRG um, in that they shadow dropped um, like the Series X upgrade. I wondered what that was, because I thought it was updating, but then it said the word upgrading. I'm like, that's not updating. What? What is that? Yeah. And the only thing I've noticed so far is that every like, symbol in the game, like, you know, like, symbols for, like, mods like, and perks and stuff, all of that stuff is just really thin for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it all just looks really thin. <coughs> you might not notice yeah, yeah. it, and I'm only noticing it, I'm only noticing it because it's everything. Every symbol is thinner. <laughs> it's yeah. well, weird. I also, you also had to upgrade all of the DLCs as well. That was, I, like confused me. Uh, okay, this definitely isn't the normal update or upgrade. I, I had to upgrade all them. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what you want us to talk about that. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's weird as hell. I don't know. I want to bring it up. Um, it's not really... Uh, well, I mean, it could be considered news, but, you know, to me, news is... Um, what they talk about publicly. I don't know why they really, but they really did. They this just came out of nowhere. Well, do we even know if like the Xbox and PlayStation part of their team is actually part of their team? <laughs> uh, that's a good point. No, I guess not. Because yeah, I mean they always kind of like tap on to things like oh yeah, and you'll get it like two weeks later on like Xbox PlayStation. Um, but yeah, now I mean. If it's not really the main Deep Rock that make it, I mean, it's got, I keep calling it Ghost Ship Deep Rock. I, mean, <laughs> I think that's because... Make, so it's not inherently... Well, I, no, I think it's because we've um, talked about DRG as, as a company a lot yeah. in these podcasts. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, maybe they don't really... They're just not really that connected to the uh, Xbox or PlayStation side of things. So... They don't really see it as newsworthy, maybe because they're not really aware of it, or they don't really care that much. Um, they also probably shouldn't care because it ran perfectly fine. It ran well, as good as it should running, do, isn't it? I don't think. Uh, no, it's just it, it's it's just um, like increasing, like everything. I mean, is it like is it a side great. effect of the FSR two thing? Is that related? Probably because I think that is basically the same thing, but for PC. It's just, it makes it look better and run... I mean, that was in the news. I didn't really know what to say about it. <laughs> yeah, so I guess um, that's just what they were working on then, just generally improving the look of the game for everyone. Don't think they really need to, because the only important no, thing yeah. is perform consistent performance is more important to me. I think than I was about to correct you, uh, because it's not the only, but yeah, I think frame rate is... Yeah, as long as you're getting a 60, then you're all right. But then... Uh, I think every, I think nice... a lot of people don't realise that everyone... You can deny it. Everyone cares about frame rate more than graphics. <laughs> Inherently. Yeah. Like, even subconsciously. You don't realize. It's yeah, just, like, a, it's just I... what we've come to understand is being more necessary for a game to look and feel good is frame rate. I was on Elden Ring the other day, and I... Like, there was, like, you know, there's, like, normal most games, there is, like, you know, Fidelity and the other one. But they just had, like, uh, frame rate or, uh, like, visuals quality. And I've always just had it on frame rate because that's just the default one. I never checked it before. I switched it to visuals. First of all, couldn't really tell the difference. Uh, but that's because help. the frames also, dropped. Yeah, yeah, it, it was it was slightly choppy. And I'm like, this is horrible. <laughs> In no universe. Yeah, is and that this made because horrible. it felt worse. It also looked worse. Yeah, and I'm on like the best Xbox, Jed. I, I'm not. I don't think you can buff your Xbox. I don't think that's <laughs> allowed or possible. So like, that is that is what they meant by it. That means that you will have shoddy frames for quality that I don't. I honestly, I probably chances are my TV couldn't support. Like it's just it, not good enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it might be. It might TV. be your TV. <laughs> And not a monitor. I mean, mine's not good. Is. But, uh, uh, yeah, and, and yeah, the choppy frames, it was like, this is disgusting, I'd rather die. So I immediately turned it back. I mean, it's really interesting, though, whenever I see um, Deep Rock on OBS, 
when I'm streaming, it's like because my laptop is just like pretty new, so it's extremely um, dense that the amount of pi- pixels yeah. on the screen. So the game looks absolutely flawless, and you don't realise because it feels like it looks good because it runs so well on my Xbox, but my TV is really quite old. Well, it's, yeah, like you it's don't realise how TVs. many it looks like it looks more detailed on my laptop. It's weird, <laughs> but so I know why. You've got, like the most modern TV flat screen, um, forty inch Portlaki, uh, which my brother had. Um, I say he had because he broke it. Haha. <laughs> but the fuck? Um, unless you unless you have that, it it kind of doesn't look amazing. It never really can. My sister dropped because... her phone in the bath yesterday. <laughs> 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 Fuck's wrong with stupid little siblings breaking expensive well, shit. Ironically, it was his uh, iPad that fell onto the TV. She's um, broken two tablets in the last couple of years. Of One of my tablets, my brother sat on. Anyway, um, what are we doing? It's a bit random. Uh, Speaking of randomness, um, that was the other topic. It was actually RNG in, in relation to... Well, I, I basically i am going to make the claim. I think RNG is a very important... No, I don't think it's the only thing, but it's a very important component in what makes uh, the missions feel rewarding to play, in that you the unpredictability. Right. I mean, I've said this before, um, and I probably made this statement on quite a few different things, and then the opposite is also true. But honestly, events, I don't know, not really events, but the randomly spawning things. It's just encountering things that aren't always going to be there. Right? Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, basically, everything they remove in deep dives are the best thing in the <laughs> game, and the yeah. only reason I play it. The sheer, just, like, you could walk into a room, and there's like. St- 17 fucking Uberlite spikes. There's phasing out of the ceiling. There's a, there's a, 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 mich- a fucking machine event at the end and a prospector in the air. And it's full of cave leeches, even though it's not cave leech cluster. And you could just experience that just kind of like randomly. And it's just amazing. Yeah. Like, but this, this, I was going to turn this into, not turn it into, but lead it more towards a criticism of industrial sabotage and escort duty and why those missions yeah. quickly become less rewarding. Um, it's because you know exactly what you're in for. Yeah. Which is um, also a, a thing I would say, which kind of discredits my thing, but like, even though it's my favourite game mode, uh, point extraction is also a um, a kind of yeah. target of that. Yes, it is. It, because... it's, it's also, like, I would say in a different regard, though. Like, I mean, obviously it's still not fond of spawning machine vents most of the time. Um, like, it can, but like, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Um, but like it's more that they have an issue of the format. The format of the cave is like yeah. Sniss pointed this out actually. Very um, recognisable. It's the yeah. only mission type where they actually need to like add more variety to the cave shapes because you're like yeah. I have seen these caves before, and you also pretty much always know that you're going to be speed running a point extraction. Yeah, but that's a bit um, different. That's just kind of how the mission plays. Which I think it's fine. Yeah, but even then, that's not really the main issue. It's just a thing that it, I, I don't want to take away that. But I, I, you could also levy it against these two, with um, you know, point shacks, not point shacks, and fucking industrial sabotage and escort duty. They are technically not the same caves. Like a lot of the time, they're, they're probably tons of variants. But the issue is that they're they're like the way they're kind of made or done is that it doesn't fucking matter yeah right at the end of the day the omeron and the caretaker where you're going to be spending most of your time is just going to be a gigantic hollow room and that's it that's that's all it's going to be it doesn't matter about any of the details that's just how it is which is why you've got to kind of i guess you've got to give that to point extraction like even though they're giant hollow rooms in point extraction they have made them different they just haven't had enough of them which, um, is probably well, I think the offshoot shouldn't... rooms in Industrial Sabotage can be like just about any cave type. You can even get those weird crisscross ones, like where it's like a raised tube in like a big cross. I suppose you can get yeah, a lot of different ones from also... the offshoot rooms. Yeah, but you could also get quite a few different ones in the um... escort duty. Escort duty. No, yeah. you can't. No, escort duty. No, they really <laughs> is the same can... every time. No, you can't. Um, sorry, uh... they're all roughly the same size. 
Well, right. You have the small rooms that are like nothing. The little pockets of nothing. Oh, yeah. And you then you what? have the bigger ones that you have to refuel in, um, which can vary quite dramatically depending on the biome. You know what I have noticed, yeah. though? Escort Duty does have... It, it's got those weird ones that are only on Escort Duty, where it's like a hole in the ceiling, and you have to go up in it, and it's like usually Nitra up there. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know how else to describe it. It's literally just where well, there's a big... Like, the room isn't really anything. It's just a big hole in the ceiling. It's just a big ring. And you have to go up in it, and that's where stuff is. They're, all, they're littered all over escort duties. Maybe you wouldn't know. <laughs> because you don't play them enough. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, yeah, I don't think they suffer inherently from, like, their cave generation design. Like point extraction kind of does, but it is the end of the day that none of it really fucking matters. Well, and, yeah, I'm gonna get to the is... my main argument like, now. It, it's I think you probably should. Well, it's uh, um so the reason RNG is such a, a boon for the game is because it's obviously it's the reason that you get things like events and any kind of random encounter. But for that same reason, it's why you also get entirely plain missions. Which makes the yeah. random stuff stand out, and it's like it feels like you feels good that you've come across it, right? Which is why you know you could escort do, duty and industrial sabotage are inherently not like plain. Those are not like template missions. Basically, it's leading towards something that is set in stone. Pretty much every other mission is closer to a template than a fixed experience. Um, yeah, I see, I see what you're going on now. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. And, and I also, I think it's... I mean, first of all, I think we have actually had... Because we had it recently. Uh, industrial Sabotage can have machine events. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's just that there are more curated experience means that the RNG has less of an impact on the feel of the mission. Yeah, even when it does occur, which isn't... I mean, I see it isn't that often, but only really I feel that way because I don't play those missions at all. <laughs> like, like, I've only ever really had one machine. No, no, on no. I think you're right. It, it feels like barely anything ever happens in Industrial Sabotage, apart from the main thing, which is always a very fixed experience. So, it, And it, for some reason, especially, like, even minerals feel rare in those ones. Like mineral mania on like a, oh minerals uh, yeah I mean nitro is you, you, nitro is all over the place though in industrial sabotage you get like six hundred nitro yeah. every mission it's brilliant <laughs> you need it yeah I don't know I think yeah I I, I don't know I mean, it's just kind of empty but then again I'd still rather do an escort duty or uh, a, a industrial sabotage just one of those missions than a uh, deep dive. Because they are empty, hollow experiences where they are custom made to send me to fucking sleep land. Uh, which I'd say the escort duty concept also does. But then, you know, you can get interesting things that happen in the game mode. Not in fucking uh, uh, deep dive. Well, it's the RNG of enemy spawns that can make escort duty interesting. Because industrial sabotage even wipes that out. Because, like, yeah. you know, you're not going to get an, a boat detonator on every escort duty, but when you do, that's a problem. And that's actually some of the most exciting times on escort duty, because I don't treat them. I don't treat that mission with much, like, respect. It's not very precious to me. Like, success isn't, like, essential. I mean, so if something exciting happens that just so happens to also cause the mission to fail, it's like, it's not a big oh no for me. If a boat detonator shows up, that... It at least makes things more interesting, you know? Yeah, and then I also like it with, like, because kind of how I learned how it kind of works, that, like, if one shows up near the beginning, quite likely for another one to show up later on. I mean, it's and that I think it's guaranteed of, after a certain amount of time. Yeah, that those those kind of stakes and, you know, how long those missions last. So if you're, like, running a max length Escort Dewey, quite high. Yeah. Those kind of, like, the knowledge that, like, at any moment, you're probably going to get fucked over by a giant explosion beast, which uh, you can't really do anything about because you're kind of protecting a stationary target from a slow target. I should um, say, Salvage Op almost 
falls into the same category, by the way. Um, yeah. I, it just it I I still think they need to look at salvage up and not have the same exact activity two times in a row. Yeah. Although I don't know what else they could do. I mean, obviously there's quite a few things they probably could do. Just not thinking about it. But like, I think you've got to give credit that the uh, the mule rooms are often quite jam packed. Like. They're, they're like a max length egg hunt kind of room. Like, you walk into there and you're just hit with, like, just a metric fuck ton of, like, everything. Like, it's just, just the entire mission is just in a room. Just I mean, like... it would be pretty cool if salad drops were even more, like, vast and you felt like you really had to explore a cave system to find what you need to find. The mini modes, yeah. Because it usually is just the one room, but they can get quite big. Um, wow. Maybe that's enough for that. <laughs> Maybe that's... Mm. But, like I said, we do kind of need to talk about Oktoberfest because we haven't talked about it together. Yeah. On recording. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've made, obviously, I've made two news videos on it reporting on the news. I mean, okay, let's agree on this now. Um, obviously, so it's pretty, first of all, it's pretty cool that we will see a new grenade tomorrow. But that video, we'll make a video on it, should be both of us. Okay. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, but why wouldn't well, it be? Yeah. Well, these, as, this video would have been the two of us, but I couldn't get a hold of you. Um, so I I felt the need that I had to release the video quickly because that's how the news videos work. We rely on having the news out as soon as it comes out for the views. I didn't feel like waiting around for God knows how long until you appeared. So Well, that's true. Uh, and my apologies, but... Yeah. Um, so if you can promise me that like almost as soon as it comes out tomorrow which i assume the same time something like that we can record the video um then yeah sure i'm not against it i wanted it to be both of us um but i just made the well it doesn't it doesn't have to be and it will sort of inherently slow things down anyway yeah i mean for that kind of video there wasn't really that much to say just to kind of well there was show it to yeah, there was. There's, there's actually there's technically yeah. an infinite amount to say because it doesn't show. It kind of really doesn't show anything. So it's all speculation, yeah. which means there's a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, but Unlike what, what, with Oktoberfest, but there's more of a set amount to say. Oh god, yeah, that's just that, a picture of a hat. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. What the hell? I think first things first. Harry is very insistent that we uh we we rep that hat, the barrel hat. Um. Tapper, wasn't it? I think it was Tapper. The who what? I think it was called the Tapper Hat. Because uh, it's it's like a barrel on a like a picnic, isn't it? Like isn't it on like a? It's not like a weird ass. Uh, wait, I forgot what it's called. Like a blanket. Right. Okay. You know, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the hats, the tracked and hood, or the kegger. The barrel one's called kegger. the kegger. Yeah. Why is it on a mat though? Why can't it just be a barrel? Because they kind of fucking suck at making good um, headgears. <laughs> they are insistent on making... Yeah, because they things... overcomplicate everything. Yeah, they never just let things look good. They have to go over the top with it. Which yeah, which makes why, it worse. Honestly, which, honestly, I do think the other one, the green, disgusting one, I probably see a, a more potential <laughs> look with that. Tom will love yeah, it. I can see. I can see. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but the thing is, it is actually annoying because I think I will wear the barrel hat for something. You know, while we're streaming Oktoberfest, probably. But like, imagine how fucking awesome it would be if it was just a barrel, like just a barrel, but it's on your, like, over your head. That's your head. Yeah, you just have like little eye holes. Like the pumpkin, because that's you put the the pumpkin's not on top of your head. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Your head's inside it. They did used to do very good ones. Like the Halloween ones used to be really oh, good. Oh yeah, the Halloween like, like a lot of the old ones are great. The, the pumpkin hat, the witch's hat is like a perfect cosmetic, really. You don't have Christmas to love ones, it. But well, actually, the Christmas ones, the Christmas ones have always been pretty good. In all fairness, the, the, I mean the Christmas now. tree is a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's fairly recent. Even, that's just luck. That is just luck that it works with a certain kind of look. Okay, I, I'm not giving them credit for that. Um, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, all the ones like these, they're just too goofy to really ever pick, and it's just cluttering. Yeah. Already. Well... Immensely cluttered so category. So, I don't think... We don't need to do just, like, a report. We just need to talk about the interesting parts. Like, the hats. Um, but what I really wanted to yeah. talk about 
for Oktoberfest was like I don't know if I agree with myself on this, but I will ask if you agree. Do you think there's like a particular reason they're bringing it back, and it's because they want to have more content like in between seasons? Because they're bringing it back. It's but they didn't. It's not something they would ever. Why would they? They never did it regularly. Every other event has been regular. Did it last year. I really, I, I I really got lost with time for this. But um, second of all, I do definitely. I definitely think it is uh, because they're all aware of the lack of content that they've been providing. Yeah. And also, I feel like it's because they wanted to experiment with making the events a bit bigger. Yes. And I feel like I feel like now they wanted to get it out of the way now because, I mean, with what we know about Season 2, is it's going to have... Or oh, Season 3, right? Pardon me? It's going gonna, it's gonna to overlap very heavily with Halloween. Like, Halloween is going to occur in the same time oh, yeah. as Season 3. Fucking hell, that's going to be weird, isn't it? Um, For for PC players, it's going to be at basically the same time. Hold on, is it? No, 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 is it though? Because it doesn't doesn't Halloween... Isn't Halloween like they started actually two weeks before? Maybe, but you could still... There's still definitely... Well, well, if that's the case, then there's going to be like not even a week between the, uh, the German one that we're talking about. And no, there'd still be two weeks. Halloween. Would there? The, the no, no, no. Think about it. Are... Think about it. Okay, Oktoberfest is fifteenth oh, to the third, so fifteenth of this month to the third of October. Yeah. Um, Halloween. The day of Halloween is on the is the very end of October. So two weeks before that is mid October. There'd still be about a two week gap if they were to start Halloween Not two start weeks before. Weeks. They're closer to four weeks than anything else. Three weeks. No, 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 Tyler, no, no. Use your head. Three weeks is 21 days. Most months are 30 days, 30 to 31 days. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Time's now. Point is, still, yeah, that is very close, which is either, it's going to be either that we are jam packed for events, um, which is nice, or. Uh, they'll delay Halloween a little bit, so there's a bit of a gap, but that means it'll be going on when they release Season 3. I think they can probably do it where it, there's no overlap. Yeah, there's not going to be an overlap if they leave it, but like, I think it is something that like maybe they won't... Because I would like for this to be the new norm, as you mentioned in your video. Um, the, like, the new norm is now every in every event we get like an event. Well, it doesn't beer, have to be a beer. Be pretty cool. Uh, I, I don't know what else it could be. No, then, me like, neither. Be... But it doesn't have to be a bit. <laughs> yeah, and then there'll be like a, I don't know, like an event-related event that gives you double seasonal XP. I can well, see that being I think, the norm. Yes, yeah. I, I think that will be the norm, and I also think that actually like consolidates the uh, them trying to avoid content drought with this thing. Yeah, putting in something and... like double season XP is then being like. I, uh, this is what we do now. Jumlock. Yeah, I know. That was. Ob- I didn't even mention Jumlock. that when we talked about it because I thought it was so blindingly obvious. Because I thought, uh, uh, shut up. Uh, you didn't even realize. Of course, it might. Shut up. Point is, shut up. Point is, um, yeah. And I, I can also see that if they do keep it up, Halloween is going to be slightly easier because with this. Oh they yeah, they don't need of... to do Halloween exactly the same way. Well, no, but I think they kind of could because it's already be kind of awesome there. If they did, Halloween, did. Halloween already has in-game effects. They just have to tie that into an event. They can just have it so if you break enough pumpkins or break a pumpkin and the event item comes like a out, skull. you get double XP. Also, yeah, like actually, I was about, <laughs> sorry, I was about for some reason, for some reason, because I'm a dumbass, I was about to say, why aren't they just, why don't they just put the skull helmet in? Just a skull. That's because of the the skeleton crew helmet, which is already their overcomplicated version of just a skull helmet. That was that was the first. I mean, it's their logo, fair enough. But the fact that that is off color pisses me off to this day. That was their first and beginning of the um, off colored colors for no fucking reason. Was was their uh, supporters like uh, diving helmet? Um, but that's that's a topic for probably no other day. Off white. So got it in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I look forward to Halloween hats still. I mean, they've not really been good for a little while, but they have quite a bit. Of, actually, yeah, 
I think the last one was like the uh, the mask, like the uh, the thing from the deep. And yeah, the, the last one was the Deep Devil One mask. Galactic. Devil Mask is, you know, it's the Devil Mask. Well, I think I just, I think I just don't like that they are Halloween masks. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like from a shop. Like the yeah. the pumpkin, like the, the witch hat like, is also like, that, I suppose. Yeah. But the witch hat is also like straight up a witch's hat. Like it's exactly what it would be. Yeah, it's just off coloured. Um, off coloured to what? Off coloured to black. It's not black and orange. It's like uh, beige and peach, which doesn't fucking match with like anything. Um, which can go fuck itself. Uh, I don't know what the other one was. What was the other one that year? That year. Well, that. Event. I don't know. Hello, which is hat and uh, probably something else annoying. Point is, something else annoying. Uh, <laughs> uh, what actually were we talking about? Oh yeah, Halloween uh, may or may not be like this this beer stuff. I feel like this this is going to be a test at most, right? I think they're going to be putting the water. Maybe they might notice that having double mission events that might or double you know um, XP might break the season pass like if they accidentally made it far too common people if it's the same it's like the, the same pass. as the um the daily specials where it's actually like double what it says it's supposed to be so it's actually four times xp yeah you drink it and you just admit like or you find the uh the, the, the best worst mug and you just like yeah and you complete the mission that's basically it you're like complete a level of the pass guaranteed um which I, I assume, and it's kind of what it says, but that won't come into play probably any, uh, any what's it, like, uh, mm. uh, daily challenges that you complete probably won't be doubled, or definitely won't be doubled. And I imagine data cells probably won't be um, doubled. Um, they're, they're, no, 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 no. Cells, so I think, it, the thing is, the... the thing is, I think it will be. No, because, okay, hold on. I should be able to tell because I've got the post right here. Okay, um, earn double season XP. Um, recovering the best worst beard mug during a mission will trigger a bonus, doubling your mission performance points for that mission. So surely that would include everything you did in that mission that earns you points. So that could exclude the challenges but include data cells. It could include data cells, which I think is fair enough if you get a data cell and a worst mug. My only question is, I mean, that worst mug's got to be pretty visible, right? Or it's going to have some sort of form of beeping, because otherwise people will not find it, unless that's kind of the point, um, that it's it's just sometimes just kind of hidden around, which if so, more. I need more of that. I need more. Give me more hidden things. Um, okay. Like... Well, no, because I am a huge advocate of just throwing as much shit into the cave. Like, <laughs> I love the position of Phage Unite. It's a cool new mineral that can just occur. I'm a fan of all the events and everything like that. I'm just, if they're adding a new mugs laying around that you have to pick up, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the craftable beer like plants. I don't even use them because I love collecting them so much. Um, I mean, it might have to use it. it I, actually, I, hmm, I'd be surprised if you do have to use it, actually, to craft best words yeah. considering it's and temporary I, I think the fact that it's temporary kind of means one thing or the other like I think it would be a very very cool if it actually does do something special um, there's like no reason well it, it would be weird if it didn't right it's not just yeah. going to be something that gets you drunk no yeah no. it's obviously it's either going to be like one of the funky ones that maybe turns you into a sausage or it's going to actually like affect your missions where uh, maybe... I don't think it's a daily special I mean, I'm not saying I don't think it is either, but I'm saying it's. On the I table, think if it not. was, I think if it was, it would just be the double season XP thing. It's already got something like that going for it, but in a different, I, I, through a different means. I don't think it would be double, but I think it could be like 0. 0.25 or something like that. Like, nah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be a mission buff one because I think. No, I, I think that's less likely because of you. You find the finding them in the mission thing. Um. Well, I just have to but, see because uh, I don't want to guess its effects because I have no idea. I'm no I'm, idea. I'm doubling down on the turning you into a sausage. Turning you into I'm a sausage. Pretty, I'm pretty confident it's going to turn you into a sausage. Mm. Well, to be uh, fair, yeah. the, like the sausages and the pretzels have been like in like all the like the the key art for this event, right? Yeah, but they haven't. It's not like they've been used. I mean, it's a bit, bit of a weird thing to point out, but it's like it's no sausage hat. It's no pretzel hat. 
Right? Yeah, there's just a lot of decoration of it. There's a sausage in uh, the mug. <laughs> there's a sausage. They probably, you know, because they are, they do actually have the uh, the barrels as like just around. Like we saw it next to the bar, but now they're going to be on your head as well. So they did actually make those uh, barrels and then probably put it on your head or vice versa. So they do like to or have reused um, a model for two different uses. No, it's not the same so, model. Yeah, but it's the same design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it might be the same model actually. <laughs> no, it's not exactly the same. Um, same design. Yeah, I, yeah. So they might have ported it over, turn you into a sausage, like the ones in decoration. Turn you into a sausage. Uh, but yeah, I mean. For the mission. I mean, there's not long left now, is there? When is it coming out? What's a week today? All right then. Uh, Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, is that the end of the... the that? Because I, uh, I have one last thing. Oh, that we're gonna, sure. It's, it's new. Well, it's, you, know that, you know that thing that you, you wanted to do, but it doesn't get updated enough to do? The uh, dev stream. Right. Uh, um, part. Yeah. Well, while I was watching it for the... Well, I'm going to go. I'm gonna have a look at that page now out on the wiki. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah. Uh, I took some notes. There wasn't much. Well, there was only one question. Nothing here. But it, it gave a lot of information. Um, and this is about the robots heading into Season 3. Um, and as you're all probably aware, that they're going to be toned down, which we all kind of assumed, but is its rival presence is currently, as I think Jacob says, he doesn't know exactly what goes on behind the scenes. I don't think that's really his job. But uh, it, it's like guaranteed one to three, I think he said, and that will not be the case anymore. It would just be like, as far as I'm aware, at least a normal uh, warning. Um, the Nemesis will still be able to spawn in normal missions, it will still kind of just occur. Well, actually, he never said that. He just said the nemesis will still be able to spawn, but at, uh, but will be just be a lot rarer, basically. So I'm not sure if that's in rival presences, they'll be rarer, or as a thing that will spawn already. I mean, I, I, I'd make them more common in rival presences if I were them, and cut them out of normal missions. Maybe, yeah. Uh, that's what I, I would think do. It, it's definitely uh, worth knowing that the robots are not being completely removed which uh, is actually something i didn't write down but i remember is they are currently they they did never say they never say anything for the future right even when they were currently very much leading towards never removing any content They're like wolves there's no past they, or future <laughs> they, they 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 as it stands right now they are not intending on removing any content that they add um they don't like doing that but they can't say that in the future future they they might not get rid of some stuff if the game starts getting bloated yeah uh, i mean honest, well you know like in awesome. season four you can begin phasing out certain things from season one yeah but uh or maybe a bit now, further ahead than that it's like maybe for, maybe you like weirdly far ahead where it's like season six which, and um, season one no longer exists of, and then going uh, you know, on and on which speaking of uh they may not um get rid of robots in season six because <laughs> they might come back they, yeah, robots are still on the table for coming back. You know they what? They are not done with robots completely. Do you know what I want to say um, about that? Good, good that they're yeah. not completely off the table. And also, just good that they're not coming they, back for season three. Just good. they are not. They are not just going to leave robots how they are right now. They are at l changing at least one. Because someone said like nerf the robots or like balance the robots, and he was like, uh, we, 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 well, you know, uh, we are kind of doing that." Um, and then someone else was like, "What?" Like in in the fucking like uh, like his team, um, he's like, "Yeah, or well, at least one." Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, they are, they are trying to change and or balance at least one of the robots, which uh, God knows what that is. Probably the patrol bot because I think that's most people's biggest offender. Like that that's the one where people that hate the robots point to that being dumb and stupid and shouldn't be in the game. So maybe they're tinkering with them a bit. But um for now. Uh that yeah, was that, I suppose just it makes from sense. waiting for the teaser, which was pretty good to stumble across to be honest, because this is quite good information that they probably won't put in like teasers. That'll just be something that they will just mention in passing at like points like these. Um 
But yeah, robots are being pushed aside um, in season three, which we already kind of knew, but we wondered how far they'd uh, be pushed. Pardon me. Um, but yeah, which it is no worth noting that he never mentioned anything about um, industrial sabotage, so it, it might just continue to exist in the way that it is, just a mission that you can do. Yeah, um, I mean that's probably the. Uh, what else can you do, really? Yeah, which is why probably if anything. If they worry about the game getting bloated, that's probably on the chopping block eventually. Like, the long way down the line where they've lost the sentimentality, uh, they'll just get rid of it. Because it's just a mission that doesn't reward you that much, just sitting in the, uh, the menus. Um, but for now, it seems like... I, yeah. I don't know. My instincts tell me that that's the last thing, to be honest, that they would cut. Because it's well, just see... too big. I know, but that's the exact I think they're too proud of it. Uh, yeah, but I think they're also not that proud of it. Uh. <laughs> but like, I think that's exactly why it will be cut. Because as far as like the nemesis and rival presence is concerned, they kind of fit into the rest of the game. They don't need to be removed. They're, they're just kind of additions. Um, they're going to be like little tokens, memorials of this these seasons. But the industrial sabotage is going to be a stark like sore thumb reminder that's just always just gonna kind of be there like i am a part of this game just I as much as i've ever been agree okay. i agree yeah. yeah i just don't so, think no, i don't think they're gonna remove i it. don't know why so on. this is feelings right and you're not gonna like me saying this this is just what my instincts tell me they're probably more likely to remove like the events than I'm, something like industrial sabotage here. That is one thing. Well, um, it's fine um, as long as it's just a data deposit. <laughs> I mean, as mentioned, they they have no intentions of removing anything. So we can safely assume that the events are going to remain in the game. But in what form or what reward they'll give, we have no idea. But we'll find that out. That is actually... Probably that's something we speculated about like but, uh, a while ago. Like, I think yeah. pre-season two, we were still thinking about that. It's like, what's actually going to happen to these events when they go? Yeah. We'll find out. Well, and they're the, not going to go. Yeah. But I mean, what's going to happen to them once they're no longer uh, relevant? Yeah. Because we'll find out soon, which is weird. Well, not that, yeah, not that soon. Not in, like, a teaser or anything? Just no, that's not something in, to like, tease. Maybe in, like, streams or when the uh, the branch comes out. Which I, know, I can see it being a trailer thing, where it's, like, a point, they can make a point about how they're handling, like, l legacy stuff from previous seasons. Because that's more than just, like... That's more Maybe. than just like, this is what we're doing with these events. This is more like, this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to be handling things going forward. Maybe. It'll be like the beginning of their, uh, their like, you know, their normal teaser trailer. Not teasers. Like, once teasers are over, their normal trailer going through everything. But, um, yeah, for now, uh, robots are going to be around for a while. And I'm, I'm against that. I'm just kind of curious in what form the events are going to be in. Um, if the nemesis is uh, going to be relegated just to them, or now they're just going to be rarer to spawn in missions, because I don't know. I think that's I, once again, I am an advocate for as much shit as possible in the cave when you get there. So if ne a nemesis could be when there, you get but there? really rare, well, not what? When, yeah, I mean, well, right events, there, <laughs> minerals, <laughs> events, events, minerals, all that kind of stuff, just kind of being in the cave for you to find. I'm a fond of that, and. If a nemesis is rare but still pre like present, that would be cool. You know what I mean? Like, oh shit, a nemesis. It's been a while. Yeah, I agree. Actually, I actually think yeah. um, because especially if you increase the chance of them spawning on arrival pres presences, the warning, the the delegate that delegation would make the nemesis is the nemes the nemeses feel less um, special. Because then it's basically, obviously they still wouldn't be guaranteed on arrival presence. I mean, you don't actually have to increase the chances either. But just the mere delegation means you know that this is the only time you're going to encounter a nemesis. So even though it's not every time, it's still yeah. not a surprise. And I think uh, as much as people will probably be bummed out that they're not completely removing them, the fact that... Um, in because rival presence is, is something you just couldn't avoid. You just couldn't avoid fighting robots in these seasons, which is why people kind of drop the game when they hit the robots. But with now, they're probably maybe going to be like one or two, like in one or two wipes. Like, 
or like two like, cycles of like worlds. Well, like you are no by no means guaranteed rival princes is a kind of. Oh, so there'll maybe. be like um, a rival presence every one and a half rotations. Maybe or something like that. Yeah, that's it, like the normal. Like, that's like the normal for every it, morning. Yeah, it might turn into like a haunted cave situation where it's just every so often you'll see it, and uh, if you want to. If or yeah, if you if you like robots, then you'll be doing them as often as you want. I mean, but I'll be doing rival robots, presences. Then it's great. And then it's you a good can mutator. Just actively ignore it, um, and then maybe yeah, with the events, they might need to tinker around with them because then it is going to be robots that people don't really want to deal with, or they'll just have to suck it up. Um, <laughs> we'll see, and we're going to be seeing on the third of November this year. Wow. Um, well, oh, well, ah, before that, actually. Two weeks before that, um, yeah. actually. So, is, that's is the, um, let's get the, because uh, dates are funny. Official calendar. Two weeks sure. before 3rd of November is the 19th of October. Right. Um, that that should be when really... the experimental branch drops, which is when yeah. things, that's, that's, that's essentially the start. Two weeks before the launch. So that's a lot, that feels real close, really... doesn't it? That's like, that's like a bit over a month away. And not to mention that in that time, we're going to get, we're going to, well, from next week, then we're, for this week, we don't know much else to run on. Right. Actually, well, we have got grenades. Yeah, did you just forget about that? Did you just... I did. I, I thought this week was over, but then, shit, yeah. Grenades tomorrow, which will last us until next Thursday, which is going to start the event, and more teasers uh, for those next two days. Then we got the event for next Woo! two weeks, not to mention the teasers in those weeks. And then the event will end. We're still going to be getting teasers, though. We're going to be looking more at the biome and events teasers. Then we're going to enter the, uh, you know... Uh, Halloween event, which may or may not be as grand as this event, but at the very least it will be an event, and I like Halloween. It's pretty cool. I have a pumpkin in my room that isn't real. It'll be very moldy if it was. I like Halloween, but, but I am absolutely repelled by Halloween-themed food. Oh, yeah, that's because it's foul. Um, like the, they Didn't um, Jaffa, Jaffa Cakes like a, a glowing green uh, jelly? Yeah, me get that size. shit away from me. Like, even Yeah, but even I mean, like how... Even Halloween like themed Harry Bows, it's like oh I don't I, something about this is off to me. Yeah, but like like uh, Jaffa, it's j- fuck it out. Um, Jaffa cakes already have like orange. They just have to like make a little pumpkin <laughs> face in it. Like I mean, the, 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 the Jaffas are pretty bad, but you don't understand how like, deep this goes. I barely like I don't even really like eating during Halloween. Yeah, no, I I don't I don't it's have any weird. candy really. No, 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 no. I don't like eating as I normally do. It's, Eating it's becomes different. worse during Halloween. <laughs> we we used to yeah, I, we used to sometimes go around my nan's for like Halloween, and there would be like little spiders in that. Not actual ones, but like little little. It's like a little toy ones. spider, like <laughs> hanging in like a bowl of crisps. Just like, what's that doing there? Get the fuck out what? of here! I just want the crisp. Fuck you! Fuck your spiders! <laughs> yeah, they'd have like little like confetti, sparkly like little spooky like cats and stuff. And that would be all around the table. Yeah, we got and... decorations, got like like a web that we put over the mirror in the mi- living room. And I just... Yeah, this we fucking used to, sucks, we used to man. Always, like make like the because I mean I don't remember how often we did it because it wasn't like every because normally we just do it whatever it coincides with a Tuesday. But it was like the they would have like spaghetti and it's it's like worms with uh, blood and like I'd have the macaroni and cheese and it was like it was like bones in uh, bone sauce I think. Which, bone uh, sauce. I don't, I can't remember. Realistically, it would have been cum, but we were children, so uh, oh, we should not do that. So um, um yeah, bone but, sauce yeah, does sound like cum. Uh, Basically, two more weeks of Halloween, which may or may not be as big as an event as uh, the one coming up. But yeah, but be an it's event still anyway. something and, going on to yeah, pass the time. Which also, actually, wait, that's that's going to coincide with the the patch, isn't it? Oh, what you're saying? Halloween should coincide with. It's not. It's not experimental. It is. No, it will. It, it may well, not it depends exactly, on what side of is. the month it's on. No, wait a minute. Oh, you're right. No, you're right. Sorry, shit. You're right. So, yeah. yes, you're right. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Like technically, technically it, but... technically, it doesn't because I don't. No, 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 no. Because exactly. I don't think the experimental build would have Halloween on it. No, but it doesn't matter. Point no, is, yeah. we're gonna Still have the, same time. the people. We're gonna have the Halloween build and not build fight, Halloween like an event to play. While having teasers, well, actually the teasers will stop because no, the, the teasers would have stopped. Branch, yeah, 
uh, is out at that <laughs> they point. They don't need so, to have teasers at that point. <laughs> I know, that's why I correct myself. But at that, uh, yeah, so late October, we're going to have a um, Halloween event for people that don't play Experimental, but then obviously the Experimental being leaked, I guess leaked is probably the accurate term for that kind of stuff. Um, and then all that's going to occur, and then come November 3rd, come. Um, we are going to have the official release of Season 3, and then... We on Xbox are gonna have to wait another two weeks. Yeah, but, uh, but I do that's think it's interesting that to fly blind, that so. we will know everything like two weeks before the actual release date. Like, yeah, it's not an amazing, it's not in a ridiculous amount of time until we do know everything about season three. We, we, yeah, we're looking at knowing everything within you know probably close to early October. I mean, week or two after October. Um, yeah, yeah, which is uh, not that far away. So basically, uh, the drought that we've been on for the last couple of months is over. It's raining and it's pouring. It's not pouring yet. Snowing. It's not pouring yet, okay? It's raining. It's raining, it's raining right, right now. now. It's going to stop Next... um, tomorrow. Um, yeah. There'll be like a big... Um, uh, there'll be some thunder tomorrow, but then the storm will be over. Uh, but then it will start like, raining consistently next first day until like until february pretty much until f- <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, yeah so basically when it rains it pours it's it's, it's deep rock time baby <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah this is this is the time of the year when it picks up and they picked it up a bit earlier with uh uh the drinking event the drinking event. I keep forgetting his name. <laughs> Oktoberfest. But it's not it's in October. Not even in October. <laughs> Most of it isn't in October. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. Um. So, goodbye. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I kind of built up to a grand end in here. Harry. Did you we could just end it? Yeah. We talked about how much content we're in store in store for. Yeah, we're really hyping things up, and then we end it. <laughs> Goodbye.